Bobby Grunfeld is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5 Knight of. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. It's, no, it's just to move. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah! Here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You are looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. What do you think about this opening? Honestly, what do you think? You about don't have to play knight c3. We can actually put a piece on d2, which is better, because then we avoid the potential doubling of our c pawns. What you have to understand about practical endgames as a whole is that just like in the middle game or the opening, um, you cannot rely uh, solely on these general considerations. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Silecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome everybody. My name is Yanni Bomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable? A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot.
Seriously? is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew. Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. Hi there, it's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented Aim Chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com, Lee Chess, or Chess24 account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, thick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? What? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs> that's so f***ing dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's... But it, just sign up for Aim Chess, okay? Just come on. Literally, why not? All right, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. All right? Jesus Christ. Chess, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Hello everyone and welcome to this short introduction to the Roy Lopez. So the Roy Lopez is a chess opening that appears after the move e4. Black replies e5. We play knight f3. Black replies knight c6. And now bishop to b5. This is the, the Roy Lopez. We intend to castle next and we are building uh, some initiative in the center later on by playing the move c3 and hopefully d4. Uh, it's a very solid and reliable opening. It has been played by basically all the world champions throughout the, the history of chess. It has been around for hundreds of years and uh, it can definitely last you a lifetime once you learn it. So I really recommend you all to try out the Roy Lopez. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Hello everybody and welcome to Chess24 and welcome to the final of the FTX Road to Miami tournament, part of the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour. It's been a wild ride. We've had uh, some real action, ups and downs as you would expect in this knockout bracket. But finally, it is Wei and Lemon Aronian who are going to be 
deciding who wins this tournament. Uh, they've both battled extremely hard. Both deserve to be in the final, in my opinion. And uh, the next two days, we'll see tons of fantastic chess. There are two sets. So today will be four games. And then tomorrow will be four games as well. And if there is uh, a sort of tie break uh, action needed in the form of Blitz and Armageddon, then we will get it. And uh, well, uh, the good news for both of these players is that by reaching the final, they have both booked their tickets to Miami for the FTX Crypto Cup taking place in August in about a month's time. So where ye and Aronian will be there, as will Magnus Carlsen, as will probably Jan Krzysztof Duda, despite his loss against Aronian in the semifinals yesterday. He's got fantastic tour points and will be there. We will, of course, give you more details when we know about it. Um, an extremely interesting matchup, this final. Uh, we don't see that many Wei Yi Aronian matches from memory, but somebody who might know a bit more about these sorts of things, somebody who, you know, if you were playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and you had to phone a friend and ask something about chess, then this would be your man. The one and only 2004 World Championship finalist and all-round genius Peter Leko is with me. Peter, yeah. we made it to the final, buddy. Yes, exactly. Hello, Lorenz. Hello, everyone. Definitely. I mean, this very versus Levon Aronia match, I feel that it's very, very interesting. I mean, I can't really recall any big clashes. I mean, definitely no matches between the two players. And uh, it's, it's going to be super exciting. I, I believe that, you know, in the preliminaries, for example, Vei was not uh, playing so well. He, I mean, he was highlighting this himself that he thought like in the preliminaries he was not doing that well, which I kind of understand because playing at night in China, it should be very, very tough. On the other hand, you know, when you are playing matches, you can, uh, you know, you can make preparation for the opponent. You can be much more specific. Yeah, this means right. that you will be so much more into that match scenario. Yeah, and this is why I feel that Wei is now so much more uh, tougher in the matches because he's very focused. He is, and he's shown extraordinary good nerves, good resilience. He's been, you know, in tough spots, tough positions. But he's, he's as, you, as you've commented uh, numerous times, Peter, he, he's playing like a machine. He defends like a machine. He attacks like a machine. He's part of this new generation of, 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 of this computer chess that, uh, you know, learning with the computers how to defend, how to attack, it's... It's very different to what we expect from a more creative player such as Levon Aronian, let's say. Yeah, he's, he's this calculating monster. Yeah, And we see also that Levon is always playing very fast, which means that he relies on his, his intuition. Yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't really want to calculate too much. First of all, of course, Levon has incredible preparation. I mean, he has a, he's a total all-rounder. Yeah, he knows all the openings. He knows all the systems he can switch accordingly. We have also seen yesterday against Duda that uh, it was clear that Duda wanted to get into those very, very sharp positions. The Queen's Gambit accepted and then Levon immediately said, thank you very much. I don't want to be invited to that party. No, no, I'm going to play the stick to my kind of chess. And he deviated. He was even slightly worse maybe, but he was having things under control. And, and this is Levon Aronian, extremely flexible and so on. I also see that Levon, because he finished seventh, so basically now that they are facing each other, he had the right to choose. And he's doing the Magnus thing, yeah? He picked That's the it. right, he took the right pieces exactly. Mm -hmm. And there you have it, yep. Levon with the white pieces, day one against Wei Yi. Be really curious to see what openings they do settle for, as Peter was commenting there on what we've seen so far. Very, very curious to see uh, what way you will choose because, um, of course, he's very flexible. I mean, you have to be able to be flexible at this level. You, you can't just have a repertoire set in stone. So that's going to be very, very interesting. The games are going to kick off in about five minutes' time. Now, um, before we go there and before we check out the games, of course, people that have been watching this throughout 
know that we've got a very important uh, couple of promotions and news items for you for you guys. Um, we've had some great feedback so far, so thank you so much for that. But this is your time. If you've not yet became a, become a premium member of Chess24, please go and do that. Use 40% of the code Road to Miami. You get 40% off. It's a massive, massive saving. Um, all the benefits of being a premium member, um, you know, it's really, really, really worth it. Uh, you know, you get all the access to the video series. You get... Uh, you know, unlimited game analysis. You can chat with grandmasters. If you play things like a Banter Blitz, you might be able to play against some of the world's best players, including the world champion. You've got access to the database and unlimited puzzles and tactics trainers and all of it. I mean, the video series alone is worth it. Hundreds upon hundreds of videos in various languages. So go and get that premium membership. You also get an extra month if you go for the yearly premium and you're getting 40% off, which is probably in the region of around 60 to 70 euro discount, massive, massive discount. Use the code road to Miami and make sure that you guys check out the wall, a new feature on chess 24, go and solve the puzzles there for some very cool prizes, but also leave your comments. It's a Twitter style feed. Um, new.chess24.com slash wall. Uh, go and, you know, interact, comment, reply, do all of the sort of stuff. And you will be able to uh, really enjoy this very, very cool new feature. And I love it. I'm on the wall every single day. Also, do remember to get an FTX account, the main sponsor of this tournament, FTX, one of the world's most innovative cryptocurrency exchanges and portals. Um, if you get yourself an account, you will also give yourself a chance to uh, be involved with a number of very cool, exciting new um, ideas, including that of what's called the key, where you're going to be able to get involved with giveaways and promotions and NFTs and all kinds of different stuff. So please do get yourself an account, fdx.com or ftx.us if you're based in the US. It's free of charge. And then you can, once you're signed up and have um, an account and various wallets, then you can get all the potentially loads of great stuff just for participating. So make sure you do all of that. Now, the final is going to start in a couple of minutes time. Peter has killed me in the predictions so far. I mean, he's just absolutely destroyed me. Um, let's see if we can turn things around. Day one. Let's just do day one first. How do we see day one starting, Peter? What are your predictions? I mean, you, you mean the very first game or the match today? The ju no, just, uh, yeah, let's just do the day rather than the first game. Or we could do by game, or you, you can decide. Well, I was hoping for an exit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can do the first game. We can do the mm -hmm. first game. Okay, well, first game going to be a draw. Draw, okay. Yeah. Uh, I will take, yeah, I agree. Draw, way ye white, draw. Okay, second game, Aronian white. No, no, Adonian is white in the first ah, game. Aronian is white first, sorry, I beg your yeah. pardon. So way ye uh, with white in the second game. Yes, well, I, I do feel somehow that the first two games will be draws. That's okay. my feeling. Okay. And then game three? Yeah, and then game three will be decisive. That's, that's how uh -huh. I feel, like two draws and then one game decisive. But I have no clue who is, who is going to over push it. Interesting. Yeah? Don't, don't, Interesting. Don't ask me. I'll leave it for you to decide. Okay, who... I'm going to go. I, I, you know what? I've been very impressed by where you... He has been resilient. He has been creative in defense. Uh, he's shown great nerves. I am going for a way ye win with the black pieces in game three. You heard it here first. Nobody on earth would make this prediction. Yeah, yeah but it, it kind of makes sense. I mean, I do feel like today's match uh, will end with 2-2. That's really my feeling. And uh, in this case, I should go with Levon's win with the black pieces. But since it was you who picked <laughs> Bayi, 
So then, uh, then no, 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 no. I will. No, it's uh, because winning the last game with the black piece is the fourth game. That's kind of almost impossible. I would, I would say. Then, uh, but also if Vey loses game three and then Vey will beat Levon on demand. I mean, Levon normally is very, very strong if he gets uh, the the lead. I don't know. It's. It just does not add up. Okay, then then it's going to be all four... No, but all, all four draws can't be draws. I mean, all four games can't be draws. I, I lost it. I lost it. Luckily, Levon saved me. He made his first move and and, <laughs> and that's it. I got lost in predictions. Okay. Well, we have... But but I'm going to go that it's going to be 2-2 two -two today. That's my two -two feeling. Today. Okay, fair enough. Okay, 2-2. Two -two. I'm going for two and a half, one and a half to my boy. Way you love the guy. All right. Yeah, so, Catalan. I mean, it's for the moment it's anti-Catalan. However, another big question: Levon field play B three or D four? Yeah, he goes for the anti-Catalan stuff with B three. That's the extra benefit of this move order. Yeah, that uh, I think that Levon somehow anticipated that. And that way he would anyway play this setup against the Catalan. Let's just show because now we only have one game, so we can really get into some uh, finesses. So if Levon would play the Catalan like this, then after Bishop e7, Bishop g2, castles, castles, we would reach this position if Levon would have played d4. And since his intention was that, aha, okay, here way he has tons of experience and... Uh, he has played with Dingley and so many games recently in China in, inside this system that Levon felt like, all right, so where he will anyway probably play this kind of setup against C4. Then let me try to use this extra move B3, which might not be so, um, so familiar to, to where he, yeah. Where he goes B6, very reliable, solid system. Bishop B2, Bishop B7. There was a game, Rajabo versus... Uh, versus Duda in the candidates. The right. reason why I know it because they played some of my very, very old repertoires like from 2015, 2016. So it was very interesting to follow that game. Yeah, and here White's got a choice, but E3, if I remember correctly, is one of the main moves. Put the queen on E2 or maybe knight C3 first. What's the... Uh, yeah, E3. There you go. Yeah, Levon, Levon goes for, for E3. I mean, th there are two different ways of treating this position. Yeah, the, the, the way like with E3, which usually is the same when black plays with C5 and then goes B6, Bishop, B7. It kind of transposes. <clears throat> but uh, in this exact move, what there are also quite a lot of games featured CD5. And this is what Rajabov played. I think CD5, Knight D5, D4, C5. D takes C5, mm -hmm. Bishop takes C5, Knight BD2, I think something like this. And then here, Duda played the move Knight F6. Yeah, this was my favorite, favorite move right in, in 2015 already. I just, as a Quincy Indian player, I always felt like this move is uh, giving black quite nice harmony. I'm not sure if computer still thinks that this is best, but it's just so nice to make a move like this for me, personally. But uh, yeah, Levon plays the move E3 and... Uh, and he wants to play a much more complex, complicated game. Yeah, with Queen E2, Rook D1, still not committing the Knight to B1. Depending on the situation, he will decide where to where to push this D pawn. And often also, Black is going for structures like D takes C4, B takes C4 when White gets the center. But Black gets very, very nice uh, development also. Just a complex middle game position. All right. Very, very complex, but um, kind of the sort of style I was expecting, the sort of approach I was expecting by Levon. Um, not doing anything overly simplistic, something that can simplify. You keep a lot of pieces on in these structures and you have to pay attention to the little details. So curious how... Uh, where he starts, I guess he's got two options here, knight bd7 or c5, right? I, what else is there? Yes, black? exactly. I mean, c5, knight bd7. <clears throat> the, the point is that, uh, yeah, in this position, if you don't have enough experience, it can be very confusing because all these uh, move orders and what you want to achieve, what you want to avoid, 
by the way, we have to mention that also Levon has been playing this system with the black pieces. So he is quite a big uh, specialist in all these structures. In fact, the game that comes to my mind when it was it was Zagreb 2019 when uh, Dingley then with the white pieces played against Levon in very similar. I mean, it was basically this this very line. Yeah, finally c5 played. Mm -hmm. And I'm expecting the move queen e2. Yeah, queen e2 played as well. And there is some new decent theory, I think, with queen c8, rook d8. It was, it was introduced oh, wow. by Kramnik, I think. Kramnik, who usually was an incredible specialist from the white pieces, suddenly introduced some queen c8, rook d8 business from the black side, and black suddenly started to get quite good results with that. Also interesting. Yeah, I remember the game Magsud Luleko from 2019 Beal, very similar, right? Yes, Peter? yes, it was a blitz game. It was it it was some blitz game in the in we had this what it was triathlon or, or quadrathlon. I even don't know already. Nice. We played hell of a lot of games <laughs> during very few days, and and yeah, it it was some incredible fight. Yeah, triathlon. Yeah, it was some um, unbelievable fight. I think I was better than I was lost. Then I was fine. Then I I ended up losing. I think at the end in some terrible time scramble. It it was a blitz game, and yeah, Max Todlu was just brilliant with uh, with two seconds on the clock. I think at some point he was down to one second, and uh, it was still like in, in the middle. I mean, almost middle game position, and I got so nervous and and I was so confused what's going on that I was the one who collapsed. He's a tricky customer, is Mr. Matsudlu. I mean, very tricky to play against. Yeah, very tricky. And this is actually the new generation because they are so much used to this increment. Yeah, uh, they are so yes. much used to this increment business. For example, if I play, you know, it's very interesting. Yeah, seemingly the old generation is supposed to be slower, but it's not true at all. I think that the old generation is actually faster over the board in blitz than the young generation because simply our reflexes are used to the so-called uh, without increment business yeah and uh, and the youngsters they they simply know that how to handle those two seconds bonuses yeah this is this is their big big mastery of course online it's completely different story uh, and you see now very that's what i told you he's mixing things up he remembers that this queen c8 rook mm. is, is a move but it's supposed to be played with knight on b8 first. Mm. Those, those are very, very important details. Yeah, he lost so what's, what's the difference if the knight is on c6 compared to... to... Yeah, there are, there are differences. Yeah, there are differences. I mean, somehow you are less flexible with the knight on c6. And I'm pretty sure if you analyze with computer, then computer will immediately tell you that, aha, if you play queen c8, immediately you are fine. If you play with knight c6, queen c8, then... Computer already poses you some some problems. D4 played by Lev. Yeah, the queen on c8 looks a bit weird, right? Queen c7 probably is the standard move there, no? And then put a rook on d8 and continue. But with the queen on c8? Exactly. Now that the knight is on c6, queen c7 would have been much, much more natural. But if you play the move queen c7, then white plays knight c3. That's kind of typical, yeah, because you can never really go d4 because of knight b5. Yeah, but then you go rook a d8, and if yes. you, you have the square on b8 for the queen. Yeah, and then white often plays d3, and it's some waiting game and so on. Yeah, d3, queen b8, very standard stuff. Yeah, just uh, very complex uh, double edge middle game. But yeah, this queen c8, because if you play the move queen c8 here, then rook d1, for example, you do rook d8. For example, now we see knight c is not possible due to d5, d4. For example, a very, very big difference. Yeah. So white actually has to make up his mind that what does he do? Does he go knight a3? But okay, thank you very much. Knight is going aside. If the knight is not going, but white plays something like d4, then also, I mean, even if we start just trading everything, this, this bishop on b7 is lovely. Yeah. And then That's we can great. decide afterwards how we want to place our pieces. So some small inaccuracy, I feel. Interesting. Okay, yeah, now, now as black, you actually have to... Uh, okay, so he goes rook to eight. So the question then is, if it's an inaccuracy, how do you punish it with white? 
What is the way to punish? Already DC5? Could it be a move? Well, it's uh, already at least an extra option, yeah, which usually you would never get. You have to take them DC5. Well, there might be DC4, but... Yes, it, it might be, but then you have to calculate already. Quite yeah, a lot, but... yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you, you can't take with the bishop on c5 because bishop f6 and, and then cd5 damages the structure. So, and if black has to take bc5, it's not exactly what he wants. Yeah, then white can also maybe just take cd or, or, or knight c3, depending, and this could be slightly better for white. So, this brings us that what you mentioned, yeah, dc, DC might be critical. It might be the critical move. Yeah, DC, DC. But again, once... somehow it feels that white should be able to, to get some small initiative at least. I mean, maybe not advantage, but some small, small something to play with. Yeah, Levon is taking his time because he feels, yeah, he's very experienced with all these structures. Yeah, that, I mean, this is some kind of Queen's Indian kind of stuff with Bishop on G2. I mean, Levon has incredible feeling for that. B basically, you know, throughout my career, I felt like, you know, my Queen's Indian is solid enough against anyone except of Levon. I mean, basically, Levon was the one when, when I had this nightmare that, yeah, my, my Queen's Indian, no matter how good it is, no matter how deep I analyzed it, I still think that it's not good enough against Levon. Yeah, it was uh, it was always my problem. That that's why I had these difficulties with Levon because I was never well, feeling what, what is what is your lifetime score against Levon? Is well, it ter terrible. I mean, terrible. Uh, he he is the one who crushed me the most. Yeah, and, oh, wow. and when it hurt it the most. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's a special story. Is he your worst opponent of all time? Yes, yes, definitely. Oh, wow. I mean, with, with big, big margin, yeah? I mean, big, oh, big wow. margin. For example, against uh, Caruana, I'm in incredible plus, yeah? I, I never lost really? the game to, to Fabiano, but I don't know. I'm something like plus four or maybe even more, yeah? It's, uh, uh, I mean, it, it's very interesting. And, uh, okay, I played some very young Caruana as well, but also later when he was already 2780, 2800, I still had absolutely no problem. But Levon... I mean, Levon was uh, right from the start uh, one of the most unpleasant uh, opponents. Who was the guy you had the best record against in the elite in your years? Who was the guy best, you really owned? Best I, you know, there were periods. Yeah, there were periods when, for example, I was dominating Topalov. There was really for many, many years I was just doing fantastically against uh, Vaseline, then suddenly turned, then for mm. like five years, he was the one, you know, who was just uh, dominating me completely. And the same happened with Shirov. There were sometimes, uh, th there was like a period for like four, five years when I was just having incredible plus against him. But in all together, actually, because he beat me quite a lot of times when I was very, very young, I think he has an overall plus score. But uh, for like five, six years, I was really dominating him. What, what do you think makes an is it Levon's style that you found difficult? Was it his, his creative nature? Was uh, Veselin a bit more? I mean, Veselin, of course, very creative as well, but a different kind of creativity, a different kind of. Uh... Well, in, in general, I don't think that uh, the, the style matters, the good opening. I mean, I feel like I can play my main opening without any worries against that uh, person, then I, I don't mind if he's the world's best or whatever. I simply believe that I'm absolutely fine. But if, uh, and, and this is what I tell you, that against Levon, I mean, I never knew, I knew exactly what to do against his marshal from the white side. Yeah, so I, I did not have this punch. Yeah, I always wanted to play for something. And I just, uh, I mean, all these anti-marshals, Levon was also fantastic at. So I cannot really create problems. And uh, when I'm black, then he always targets my Queen's Indian. And my Queen's Indian is my weak spot. And, and he knows it. And he's extremely deep there. And he, and he always... And, and then, you know, I was trying to, to switch from Queen's Indian only against him. But okay, this is also crazy because that's my main opening. I can play against everyone, but, but not Levon. So yeah, it's, uh, I think it was connected with openings. 
And also that I lost a couple of games. Yeah, this is how it works. Yeah, you lose a couple of games and then the, the opponent starts to play in your head. Yeah, that you are not comfortable with. Yeah, what should I do? And whenever you lose this automatic balance, yeah, that you just play chess, I think that's how you create all these uh, unpleasant opponents. Yeah, because you, you start to sleep uh, worse, you start to worry more, and then you are not able to play your best. Yeah, that's, that's right. I think it's all together. Fair enough. So, and, and we see something very interesting. I mean, if you ask me yeah. what Levon did, I mean, I was praising Levon big time, but <laughs> I feel like if he would have played like this against me, I wouldn't be worried at all. I mean, no, 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 no. The, the move after Rook D8, Knight BD2 is way too soft. I mean, the Knight doesn't belong, doesn't belong to D2 at all. Yeah. And, uh, and they immediately use the momentum with D takes C4 and now B takes C4, Queen C7. Black is perfectly fine. I mean, white needs this knight on CC to threatening to, to push d4, d5, so that you force black to, to take quickly cd4, ed4. And then, thanks to taking, white gets more options for some d4, d5. But with knight on d2, this is not absolutely fine for black. Very surprising to see Levon play this move, knight e2, in my opinion, when the position was you know, screaming out for some more uh, more concrete uh, approach, more uh, incisive. Uh, but uh, no, now where ye, he's, he's played queen c8, queen c7, but as you say, the knight on d2 is so misplaced, there is no serious d5 threat anymore. So there is no way for white to really uh, sort of impose himself in this position. There are no jumps. In fact, I would even go as far to say that I would take black in this position because, you know, your plans are easy. You've got, as you've been pointing out, you've got rook c8, queen b8, um, uh, you know, rook c1 played by Levon, okay, but now you just go rook c8. And then you say, okay, well, what is your next move here as white? Because the move does not come to me here at all. Sure, you can fiddle around with h3 and you can play knight b3 and... The knight is odd there and you can play, I don't know, um, you, you know, you can't play knight e5. What are you actually supposed to do here as white? It's... Yeah, basically it's up to Levon to, to, to show his uh, class, yeah, because as, as you say, yeah, if it's basically more easy to be black. Yeah, you decide when you want to take c, d, e, d, knight a5, for example, it's also typical where you can... Also, just go knight a5 immediately because what I was highlighting that with the knight on d2 now, black is benefiting that he is not obliged to take cd4 quickly. Yeah, and, and we see the, the difference. And yeah, Levon goes bishop a3, a smart move. He's trying to uh, threaten with the move d4, d5, which is even a big question if d5, d4, d5 is a big threat. Maybe black can even uh, sacrifice the exchange. However, I wouldn't be surprised if. Uh, very with little time on the clock, he just removes his rook. Yeah, but I do like the idea of sacking the exchange. Let's just say you play a useful move here as black. Let's say you go h6 just to prevent any stuff. And you go d5, I take. So let me take. Queen takes c8, I guess, is the move. Yes. It's the move. Okay, then I probably I should take one f6. I guess I have to take. Takes, takes, takes. Takes, and after takes. rook d5, I have knight e4. Maybe this is important. Okay, so how bad is this? Okay, let's say I take on d1. Just curious. So rook d1, rook d1. And let's say here I play, I need a good move. Bishop e7 simply? How bad? How? But okay, I mean, okay, then white is, white is definitely fine, yeah, with knight d6. You have yeah. some compensation, but it's not. But look at this. Where he actually reacted very interestingly. I mean, oh, he, wow. after bishop h3, he played bishop a6. Beautiful. Ah, repinning. Yes. So after d5, you can take with the knight. Exactly. Oh, very, very, very nice touch. Little finesse. Knight b3 and played by Levon. Knight b3. I think Levon should be very, very happy that he has this uh, five minutes uh, time advantage. It's mm -hmm. very, very important. If, if not for that, 
I would think I would be very optimistic for black, like not having any problems, but like this, practically, I mean, there is still some spice in the position and where he might feel himself under problems. Yeah, queen b8, time, time is the issue. And yeah, this bishop a6, queen b8, some, I, I don't like it combined. Something, something went wrong. And we see that, yeah, computer now suddenly likes white a lot. I don't know exactly why. It also looks strange to me, but I don't, I can't exactly see why. Yeah, somehow black lost harmony. Yeah, black lost control. I mean, bishop a6 was very interesting. I mean, with this spinning idea, but for example, I don't know exactly this d takes c5. Wow, Levon goes knight g5. Okay, he wants to hit on e6 and then go for with d5 for attack. Or he, ah, he also wants maybe some d5 and then queen h5 ideas. Really? Okay, let's say I go h6. Let's let me just. Ah, okay. Then, then I'm going to take for sure, yeah? Take. Ah, you want to take, take King H8. You don't want to take on C8. You want to I'm going to go, can I go D5? I think I can. My, my knight is close to being trapped, no? No, I can. And also I'm then coming with E4, E5. Wow, I mean, no, Knight G5 is a game changer. Wow, I mean, just a few moves back, we were saying that, okay, Levon is playing very strange now. I mean, what is this Knight BD2? And... Just two, three natural moves by Vey, and he's already in a lot of, lot of trouble. Yeah, this, this bishop a6, queen b8 together. I mean, it just turns out that this queen b8 was very unfortunate because, in fact, it seems like knight g5 is white's only idea, maybe in the position. So, for example, a very natural, just little h6 covering the g5 square. Would probably force white yes. to, 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 I mean, basically not to have any ideas. Exactly. Yeah. And, and level immediately using the, the momentum, knight g5. Very nice by level around you. Rook c7. Rook c7. Ufa. Rook. I mean, Ufa Tufa. Look at this. Queen b Look at this. Seven. You take, you do take, you take. Bishop e6, king and shape d5. Allez le bleu. So takes, 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 and d5. Yeah. Same idea like after h6. Yeah. Yeah. So what to oh, do? This knight is a5? so level as well. This is so level. We have to go knight a5. Very sad. I have to say very sad because this might just be a total catastrophe. I mean, I don't know how to deal with e4 in the long terms. I mean, just e4, e5, and then d6 is kind of, I mean, it's a, it's a terrible position. Well, the clock, I mean, this clock issue, yeah, Levon is so, so tricky. He, he plays some complex position. He plays fast. Even if seemingly it seems like he's doing absolutely nothing, he is just so ready to jump on that occasion if it if it's occurring yeah very in lot of lot of pain here ah okay i understand Tell rook me. c7 i mean rook c7 was also trying to protect f7 yeah just in case for this d5 business when white is then trying to go queen h5 with a double attack or something i mean it's a multi-purpose move but doesn't seem to be good enough what levon takes dc5 somewhat surprising i don't understand why, why on earth do you what is this what i don't understand knight takes e6 was begging to be played and satiris confirms the engine says it was crushing and rook d1 first okay rook d1 okay taking back is not clear which way is best actually yeah i mean somehow rook takes is more natural but 
Queen takes kind of feels okay as well, no? Because the C4 pawn is so loose. Rook takes D1, H6, we're being told. Wow. Yes, yes. No, I mean, this is wow. very important. Yeah, that, this is what I want to use. Yeah, immediately kicking out with H6 because... And if C, B6? Yeah, well, it's uh, probably we get compensation, but that's why maybe Queen D1 is an idea to keep an eye on the C4 pawn. But yeah, this this H6, I'm I'm loving this idea. I mean, of course, depending how you capture back. For example, just to highlight, Rook takes D1, H6. And if you take, for example, CB6, I don't know, take with the pawn or with the... Okay, for example, with the queen for the moment. Yeah, the knight has to retreat. And then we will have some knight before jump. With, with hitting the C4 pawn and we are also hitting the A2 pawn. I mean... This Serious suddenly, compensation. Yeah, Actually, it, it, suddenly it feels, all of White's pieces okay. are very poorly coordinated, aren't they? Exactly. All right. So I don't know. Maybe Levon played too quickly. I mean, he almost, yeah. uh, after like one minute, he took DC5. I mean, he should have spent more time and just take on E6 and crush. Very strange. Okay. Wei Yi now must be feeling quite happy because, you know, it's very hard to make a big mistake now, it seems, because if queen takes d1, h6 exists, or rook takes d1, h6, then, um, then life is good. Yeah. Can you even just take on c5 after, let's say, rook d1, b c5? No, but then I think you have problems. That's what Levon well, wanted to use. Yeah, maybe well, I can just take on f6 as well. I don't know. Uh, uh, and you you want to play knight c5 after, yeah? Yes, I mean, the c5 pawn will be very vulnerable. But, yeah. uh, of course, yeah, we, we know that after rook d1, h6 is very strong, so mm. there is no way, no need to speculate. But, I mean, I was already seriously worried for our prediction, yeah? We predicted a draw and it did not look like, you know, knight e6 comes and, and white just crashes through. But, yeah, Levon somehow played too too fast. Way too fast. In other breaking news, I'm being informed that Gukesh, I know this isn't part of the tournament, but we are a chess platform. The young Indian superstar, part of the Indian Renaissance, if we can call it that, or I don't know how we can call it, but this group of incredibly young, talented geniuses out of India, when I think of them, I think of Erigeshi, Gukesh, Pragnananda, maybe I'm missing a name, but those three come to mind. Pragnananda has just won an open tournament, literally today. Uh, so he's gaining a, he won with eight out of nine or something absurd. And Gukesh has beaten Le Quang Liem with the black pieces to be the third youngest player of all time to cross the 2700 barrier. Gukesh now 2703 rated. Only 16 years old, Peter. Yikes. Um, well, you work with somebody of a similar... No, uh, Vincent is a bit older now, no? Yeah, well, I mean, he's 17. Okay, similar. Yes. What do you uh, think yeah. of, of Mr. Gukesh? Uh, by the way, Eric Gacy, 18 years old. Uh, Kmart, 17 years old. Pragnananda, 16 years old. What a future uh, these guys have in India, especially Gukesh, Arigasi, and Pragnananda. How do you see them developing over the next few years? Just very quickly. I know it's a bit off topic. but Yeah, well, no, I mean, I, I'm a very big fan of them, and I think they are just incredibly strong. For example, Praga is heavily underrated. I mean, he just haven't played enough uh, classical games. Yeah, he was busy crushing everyone on the tour, to be honest. Right. I mean, uh, that's why he, he fell behind on the ratings, but I think he's, he's coming. It's just a question of time when he also reaches 2700. Gukesh has an incredible positional feeling. I mean, when there was this uh, famous training camp by Kramnik with the, with the Indian kids, and then afterwards I read this article and it was the question, what was the favorite moment of the training camp 
for the players. And then Gukesh was saying that Kramnik's game against Georg Mayer, this very, very fine waiting move in the in the Reti. You know, then I knew, okay, this boy is just incredible. I mean, he will be uh, unbelievably strong. Yeah, because when he pays attention to all these details at the age of 14, he was at that time, uh, or maybe not even 14, then okay, just unbelievable. So yeah, I'm I'm a big Gukesh fan. Um, but now we also have things here heated up. Yeah, let's go back to the game. Yeah, yeah, and and look at this. Uh, what are we looking at here? After Rook takes d1, for some reason Vey did not play h6, which looked like uh, a very important intermezzo. He captured back on c5, and now Levon is able to carry out his idea why he took dc5 at the first place. Yeah. Mm. So h6, Bishop takes f6. A g5, bishop takes e7, knight takes e7, and the vulnerable c5 pawn. I don't know. I mean, something like queen c3. Isn't this very unpleasant? Hinting at some queen e5, queen a5. Okay, I understand. Pawn on c4 is still like Levon goes from e4. But same idea. The queen wants to somehow uh, reach e5 and touch this pawn on c5. And g5. Yeah, the black pieces just aren't working very well together. You've got a bishop randomly on a6. You've got the knight on e7 hasn't got a good root. And white pieces, suddenly there's connectivity and purpose. And you're right. I, I don't like black's position here. Also, bishop takes e6 is just a straight up threat. Uh, so you have to defend that. This is very unpleasant. Way yes. And, and that's the reason why Levon actually played queen e4, yeah? That he even get this extra tempo. Black has to worry about bishop e6. How do you stop that, yeah? And white is also, if you, I don't know, even you move something, then, yeah, it's very, very unpleasant now. Just uh, before I forget, it was actually Nihal Sarin I was thinking of. as part of the Indian group of super talents, right? So they've got four huge talents there who could easily be... All, uh, well, they're all going to be over 2,700, that's clear. But, you know, you could have an Indian national team of, you know, something similar to what we, we, we tend to see with America or Russia in a few more years. So very, very exciting. Um, very, very exciting indeed. Queen C8, Wei Yi. Or China, we, we could say. Let's throw China in there. I mean, China at their absolute peak had an unbelievable team, no? Yes, um, yeah. but somehow they are lacking now some real uh, youngsters, yeah? This is what I yeah. feel. And, and that's why I feel that now Wei is so important for them because actually they have to, to treasure it, yeah? That they have such an incredible talent. They have to support him because it's not like there are, you know, five other guys behind Wei and having the same potential, yeah? Right. Rook d6, exactly. That's what I thought. Like, queen d3 is a very big set. I mean, rook d6 and then queen d3 setting, rook d8 checkmate. I mean, uh, now where he has to start showing why we call him a machine, yeah? The, the only... Rook takes e6 is a threat as well, right? Yes. Only machines can defend this. Can, can he actually go rook c6? Can, can we do rook c6? Well, you defend e6 laterally, so it looks very, very logical to me. Yeah, I think that maybe we need to. And I also, I can't tolerate this look on d6 for too long. Yeah, but, I like rook c6. But I mean, also this, uh, even even some queen d3, how do I how do I deal with it? Because rook d8 is a big step, so I have to take. Then queen takes. Yeah, rook c6 on the board. And where do I go with this knight? Pawn on c5 is loose. Yeah, okay, pawn on c4 is hanging as well. But it's very uncomfortable. Rook c6 on the board. Yeah, looks tough. So take, so queen d3, rook d6, queen d6. And if I go knight f5, if I go knight f5 there, I know it's loose, but... Yeah, well, knight f5, or even the ugly knight g6, who knows? Because the, thanks to bishop takes c4, exactly. you are actually holding, yeah? Okay, knight f5 is a tempo, so it makes sense. But then can I take, mm -hmm. take and go queen d5? Can I do so? Oh, like that? that's cute. Queen e6, knight c5, right? I mean, you uh, have some bishop b7, queen takes c5, e5, queen, queen e6, queen d7. Yes. Yeah. This, this is the way. This yeah, is the this way. This disturbs me. Yeah. 
yes. Oh, careful. Careful. Really of course, I have I have knife D4. I have some stability, but also F4 is in the air. I mean, this is this is way out of control. Yeah. Rook so C6 not that board. easy. Rook C6. Very with 130 on the clock, but also Levon is not anymore with his 7-8 minutes. He's down to 2 minutes and he, he can't enjoy himself too much. He needs to focus. Queen D3 played. Okay, we, we're going to see this takes, takes knight F5 business. There we go. Where he will hold this? Where he holds, right? Yes, I think so. Now he's out of the woods, yeah, as you say, yeah, because uh, this is now, I mean, I was really worried that it's a complex, I mean, okay, Levon not taking on E6, it shows that this is the final, yeah, it's somehow Levon is, uh, I mean, he didn't dare to take or he just felt like, okay, if I have some simple way, let me play the simple way, but it, it backfires. He should have been level. I mean, no matter if it's final or not, yeah? I'll be honest, I'm very surprised because it's a level move. Uh, it's the first game. You've got plenty of time to come back. And also, it just looks so practically speaking easy to play because you take, you take, d 5 e4, as you said, and, and black is the one that has to find the, the defensive moves. So I, I was very surprised, surprised by DTX C5, very uncharacteristic. And now I agree, I think Levon does not win this position. Yeah, and I even would go as far as uh, if Levon does not take 96, then he basically doesn't deserve to win the game so much. Yeah, it's, uh, that, that was his golden opportunity. Also, where he was very, very low on the clock. Uh, I mean, not, not using this chance like this. And okay, we are seeing this line. Yes, white might end up with a pawn up, but I mean, with this pawn structure and with this tight squared bishop, black will always generate some counterplay. This is Marshallish. Absolutely. And and Levon is a big maestro of the Marshall, so he knows exactly what it means to have a bishop like this. Yeah, queen d5, it's it's my line. Yeah, so b bishop b7. I'm expecting no queen e6. No, why? Why not bishop b7? Queen this is probably six. still okay, though. No? Oh, but no, knight c5? Wait, what is this move, queen e6? Knight c... Yeah, knight c5. It's a blunder. Oh, he blundered. Bishop c4, queen d8 check, he missed. Oh, my god. Bishop god. c4, queen d8 check. Oh, my goodness. The commentator's curse. We jinxed him. Peter, it's all your fault. I know. I know. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it. Uh, I feel the pain. Good. I mean, okay, no, this is this is no, this because... is horrible. Okay, it's, it's that... not so easy, but I'm um, because this knight on c5 and d6, you can't get closer to this. Uh, I mean, for example, you play king f8, yeah, white pushes some a3, and then okay, luckily, luckily, black will play the move g4, otherwise, he has to design. I mean, if white gets to play f4 and then starts coming with the king, it's it's game over. So, you have to lock the king down, yeah, with g4 only move. King G2. And can you just go like Bishop uh, E2 here? Yeah, you have to play Bishop E2. Exactly, you have to. But why do we play H3 first? Okay, anyway, you keep the pawn. I mean, White's king has to be caged in. Yes. Well, actually, maybe very is incredibly lucky that he, he can hold on. He holds, yeah? Amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> he can blunder and hold. That's incredible. Yeah, actually, how does white get out? After h3, you can just play king e8 or something, or what? Yeah, I mean, you just keep the tension because, okay, AG, I, know. Um, I mean, ag, fg, and then, okay, you push e4, but it's not the end of the world. You just play f6 and you block. Right. Is there any uh, sense in going h3, g h3, king h3, g5 with the idea king g2? No, but then f4 is coming. Then f4 is coming. Uh, yeah, Levon, Levon goes h4. No, we need the pawn on g4. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the key. Okay. Yeah, I, Levon I, goes h4, h5. That's of course super smart. We Levon, I mean Levon is dreaming of sacrificing his knight on f6. Yeah, knight f6, g f6, h6 would win the game, but 
Uh, okay, nobody cares. Nobody will take this knight. Pawn on g7 is essential now. Okay, so now... All <laughs> right. The problem is every time you move the knight, I play king d7. So king h2. Now I can pass with black, so my moves. Okay, king d8. Okay, Levon gaining some time because he's only got 38 seconds, but... <laughs> It's yeah, actually... very rarely we see this scenario that Levon is the one who needs to, to win time, yeah? Yeah, and, and F4, finally yeah, F4, he goes. Yeah, he goes for it. Okay, G takes F3 check, King F2. Yeah. And Black just waits, King D8. Correct. I mean, because the point is that if White plays E4, F takes E4, G4, with the idea G5, Black still has F6 stopping G5. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very, very important. So I still don't see how to... But then Knight E6 check, Knight takes G7. That's what Levon wants to, to get. Yeah, for example, if Black plays the move King D8, then something like E4, F takes E4, G4. The threat is G5, H6, so we have to play F6. And then there is Knight E6 check, followed by Knight takes G7, and the pawn is marching. Very, very tricky. And where he plays bishop d1, very, very smart. He, he keeps the king on c8 so that knight e6 check will, it's, it's no, not going to be a check. Mm. Super smart. Very the machine. I mean, and look at this. Yeah, Levon is very, very disappointed because, I mean, give, give me one more chance. That's what Levon is signal. I'm going to grab it, but... Why he doesn't want to do him this favor. Hmm. Ten seconds, Levon Aronian. Don't forget about your own time, sir. King e1 you can play. e4. He goes for e4, but wait. Yeah, I mean, he goes for the same plan. Yeah, this f takes e4, g4. He will try this. g4, f6. And then knight e6. Still, he will try this. A king e3, e3, but now f2. f5? f2. Ah, f2. I mean, okay, f5 is part, but I mean, just f2 and then eliminating h5, I think I'm making a draw already. Mm. But maybe then it's passive. Yeah, maybe it's passive. Uh, hang on. Can you play f2, king f2, f5? Wow. Because actually now the pawn on h5 is already falling. Yeah, f2 on the board, king f2. Yeah, bishop a, ah, yeah, because exactly, knight takes e4 already, we are in time to play king d7, so you don't get the grip. And... Wow, look at this, Levon shaking his head. What happened? What on earth had happened f5? here? f5? He just lost the pawn. f5? Yeah, f5. Why can't I go f5? I haven't understood. Yeah, okay, you go f5, I'm going to just wait. I mean, I will pretend to be Levon, who is just shaking his head, but I don't want anything anymore. Just draw. Because after all, Black's king is, is boxed, yeah? I mean, you just cannot make progress. Yeah, but after, like, f5, if you go king f4, can I... Okay, bishop f3. Can I start to get optimistic? No, I, I mean, this, this move, Bishop F3 from where he actually signaled that he doesn't want to be optimistic. He, he keeps his pawns uh, on their original place in order not to give any anti-squares for White's king, and probably he will just uh, move king d8, king c8. But can't I go f5 because you can never take because of e3? Or maybe you can take, actually, sorry. But it's... It's a bit dangerous, no? To allow my pawn to get to e2 and some king and pawn in. Yeah, but you, you know, my philosophy is that if he wanted to go f5, he would have played f5 instead of bishop f3. Yeah, that's why mm -hmm. I'm somehow not believing that he's going to play like that. Yeah, king d8. Levon down to three seconds. Two seconds. Ooh. Oof. King e3. Wow. Oof. Wow. Oof, oof. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, King Sid, I told you, I told you, professional approach. Okay, he should really repeat now, Levon. There's, there's nothing to do here. You know, four, King D8. But the interesting that despite Levon being so low on the clock, where he doesn't even, I mean, he's so happy to get away with the game, yeah? Yeah, psychologically, he just thought he was... Okay, he's thinking one last time. He knows King C8 is a draw, so... Can you go G5? No, you don't want to do this. No, then Knight takes E4. Knight takes yeah. E4. Yeah. Yeah. King E8. Okay. Oh! Okay, but if next move is King D8, it's still the same. Okay, now F5. F5, please. F5, King E3, G5, and it's not check anymore. Yes, but I mean, he's worried of some F5, King E5, and King E6, D7. I mean, he's clearly not, you know, not pushing F5 because of this danger. Yeah. But I don't know how dangerous it is, because actually E1, Queens as well, we check. Yeah, it's... Exactly. Uh, it's more emotions, I think. It's more emotions. Maybe where you just shocks Levon and plays F5 here it makes him calculate. Because actually... No. There's some 96. I don't like it. Well, F5, 96, G6. It's nothing... True. Nothing tragic. 27 seconds, way. Yeah, will he repeat or, or will he go down to 10 seconds and then play F5? That would Imagine. Be yeah. But no, nothing would surprise me from where you, to be honest. Down to nine seconds and F5, I told you. I told Unbelievable. you. Unbelievable. <laughs> played it. Yeah, that's where you, my friend. 10 seconds, Levon Aronian. A4. Okay. Okay, A5. Yeah, just I A5 mean, if you fix. want to insist. Yeah, fix. Fix it on a light square. King F7. Okay. King F7. Now yeah, A5, he... surely. Yeah, he wanted to run out. Yeah, but he just wanted to make sure that this King E5, King E6 is not coming. Okay. And this A pawn is, is doing nothing. I mean, if he gets G5 and, and King F6, then he knows that there are no more problems. King F6, okay, all makes sense. The only question, why not to do this with one minute on the clock, no? Uh, to, to really lure your opponent into a full sense of security. G5 here, surely, is the move. G5, on Eva. Maybe not. Maybe some bishop... D1. Okay, but move, move, move. Uh, yeah, Bishop I mean, H5, okay. yeah. Good. I, I would be just so... I mean, I would feel so terrible if somebody loses on time here. That would yeah, be really G5. Bishop F3. King E3. The problem is you can't... Yeah, G5. Okay, King D4. Now, now we need some finesse. Yeah, what now bishop h5 probably, yeah, he will try. Or Where do we try it? bishop e2, bishop b5? Also yeah, and put the bishop on c6, cemento. Okay, first bishop g2. It's okay. I mean, you can you can just fool around with the bishop as long as you want. Yeah, why yeah, I can't really do time. anything. Yes. Mm. Maybe bishop h1? Yes. <laughs> uh, why not? Why not? Yeah, but king d4, so what do we achieve? King d4, he'll go bishop f3. King e3 back. Bishop f3, king e3. Now he maybe comes with the bishop to h5. Yeah, but what changed? Yeah, that's the big question. Now he'll play bishop e2, bishop b 5 He's got 20 seconds. I mean, no, maybe, now bishop, maybe bishop g6 and then f4, is, is that what he wants? Maybe also. Bishop g6, bishop h7. He went bishop f7. Now you've got g4, no? Now g4 exists. It yeah, mean? well, I, I thought like bishop g6 just to stop g4 in any case. g4, 
four. Maybe you just go F G. No, no. G four. You go easily, maybe. At E three. Maybe easily. I mean, I don't know what I'm achieving with it. King takes easy, three, and still, I have to make up my mind. But okay. Yeah, G four the board. G four. Yeah, no, he should have played bishop g6. Now it's, he's angry, he's taking fg, but what is this? No, king e6. Yeah, okay, but and knight takes, and draw. Yeah. yeah, and king c6. And yeah. King c4. King c4, g3, knight e5. Why is it a draw? Ah, because you just, uh, yeah, king b6. Yeah, you just can't do anything with the knight, yeah. Or king b6, rather, yeah. Knight f3, g2. Yeah, and the moment you come with the king, you come after. The, and where he's sipping his tea, no sweat, g2. And this is, <laughs> funnily enough, just an easy draw because the knight can't move. And if the king comes towards a pawn, you take the other pawn. So... I well, I mean, what a game it was, yeah? Yeah, unbelievable game. And it's still not finished. Who knows? I mean... Uh... Yeah, king b5, king c7, king a6, king b8, and okay. There is just no way through. I mean, it, it always ends its stalemate, yeah. If, but even we can't get to stalemate, but it, I mean, the way is ready to stalemate his king. I mean, he, he does not need to get into the corner, but he can. Yeah, king b5, king c7. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't even force him into the corner. Yeah. Can he offer a draw? Or just repeat? Just repeat. Yeah, basically, I also feel like this uh, draw for, especially with... When there is no increment, it's just impossible to offer a draw. Yeah, if you are down to two, three seconds, you, you just lose on time while you are searching for the button. Right. But here with the increment, of course, he can they can offer and they can agree. It's not, not an issue. All right, so your prediction for game one, Peter, is a success. Well, it was our mutual uh Prediction. No, you also went on with the draw. I did. I felt yes. like it was going to be a draw, but certainly a missed opportunity for Levon Aronian. Absolutely. Um, we can have a look if you want at the key position before we go for a short break. There's going to be a 15 minute interval between this and the next game. And I think the key moment, Peter, if we can go back, was yeah, in this middle game here after night G5. Yes, I mean, okay, just to highlight that, yes, it turned out that Black should have played the move h6 to stopping any kind of knight g5, right. but uh, where he was done on time and he got careless, he played almost automatically the natural queen b8, and Levon used the momentum with knight g5, and it looked like, okay, it's going to be a Levon show, and then please take over the, the, about the sacrifice. After yeah, seven, so yeah. basically rook c7, it, it just ran into the reason why Levon played knight g5, which is to play knight takes e6. Now, with the rook on c7, of course, you don't get the additional material, but the point is after f takes e6, bishop takes e6, check, king h8, white can now play the very powerful d5. This does a number of things. Firstly, of course, it opens up the bishop on b2, monster bishop on b2. The knight on c6 is also very short on squares. It doesn't have a natural place on b4 already the move a3 almost traps it um so if the knight has to go for example to a5 now in this position uh, we, we don't know the exact but it wouldn't surprise me if white can't just go e4 immediately uh maybe even taking on e a5 is possible and going like bishop c3 just to say i don't know safeguard uh, and then bishop takes a5 is in the air queen b6 runs into rook b1 there are all kinds of stuff and now E4, E5 is coming, and Black's position is just atrocious. He's a piece up, but uh, 
the, the piece is kind of irrelevant. White has just got too much play, too many ideas, and as Tyrus told us, this is just winning for White. So you know, I, very... I wanted to understand why yes. Levon didn't opt for it, and maybe the move night before confused him. Could it be that night before confused him because? Due to the pin, ah, knight mm -hmm. bd5 is at least something that you might be scared of. That is actually true. That is actually true. Knight b4 with knight takes d5 is something, of course, I miss. Yeah, but okay, maybe if, you can go example, e4 you play anyway. Like yeah. e4, then, then I might just take might this take stupid little a2. pawn with the idea that after rook a1, I'm coming back and I have at least a square for my right. knight. Right, right. My, that might be the reason that put him off. But even that looks so juicy for White somehow. But you're right; there's not a clear, a clear cut way. So yes. I mean, one thing is for sure that Computer will win this position from White side. But probably this little bit disturbed the level, and then he felt like, okay, hang on. But without any brilliancy, I can get a clearly better position with DC5, and and that somehow lured him in the wrong direction. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so the game ends in a draw. Way Yi will have the white pieces next. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back before the start of the next game. Game two. See you very soon. Field is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video, we're going to look at the latest developments in the six bishop g5 Nidorov. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. It's, no, it's just to move. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. What do you think about this opening? Honestly, what do you think you about don't have to play knight c3. We can actually put a piece on d2, which is better, because then we avoid the potential doubling of our c pawns. What you have to understand about practical endgames as a whole is that just like in the middle game or the opening, um, you cannot rely uh, solely on these general considerations. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same.
time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Our starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Seriously? Checkmate! Aim Chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew. Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world, fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. Hi there, it's me. John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented Aim Chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com, Lee Chess, or Chess24 account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> Now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good! Hi, it's me, that guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, sick. Luscious hair. Intuition Builder. All this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? What? So, what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a Queen's Gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. It's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's. But it, just sign up for Aim Chess, okay? Just. Come on. Literally, why not? Alright, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. Alright? Jesus Christ. Chess, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses.
Hello everyone and welcome to this short introduction to the Royal Lopez. So the Royal Lopez is a chess opening that appears after the move e4, black replies e5, we play knight f3, black replies knight c6, and now bishop to b5. This is the, the Royal Lopez. We intend to castle next and we are building uh, some initiative in the center later on by playing the move c3 and hopefully d4. Uh, it's a very solid and reliable opening, it has been played by basically all the world champions throughout the, the history of chess. It has been around for hundreds of years and uh, it can definitely last you a lifetime once you learn it. So I really recommend you all to try out the Royal Lopez. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the final of the FTX Road to Miami tournament. Day one, we've just seen game one. Levon Aronian missing a typical Levon Aronian shot. Um, we, just, we, we were analyzing that uh, just before, but Wei Yi holds on. And that means that game two, Wei Yi has got white. How is he going to approach this game? He's normally a 1E4 player. Peter, um, is he going to play e4 and test Aronian's marshal? What do you expect with this particular game? Well, definitely I'm expecting e4 from Veyi. I don't know exactly what to expect from Levon because recently he did not play so many marshals anymore. He also plays Petlov. And mm -hmm. there we go, d4. Veyi goes d4. Okay. okay. He also wants to play against Queen Gun Queen's Gambit accepted. Wow. Okay. Let's, Let's see, see Dingleland's preparation see. for the candidates. And Knight Levon f6. Knight f6. Okay. Yeah, the old fashioned line and bishop and a quick bishop f5. Yeah, knight b6, if my memory serves me correctly, was the main theoretical move. And then white decided where to put the bishop on b3 or d3. So bishop f5 might be a slightly more new. Uh, approach. Uh, Peter, how much do you know about this move? What's in your file? Etc, uh, etc. Et well, I'm not such a big uh, specialist of all these lines. And yeah, this Bishop F5, I know that it's rather fresh. Yeah, it's like some five years ago it appeared with the idea to sacrifice the pawn. Yeah, for example, if white plays Queen B3, then targets the Knight on D5 and after E6, one could assume that, okay, the pawn on b7 is hanging. However, it turned out that this is quite a poisonous uh, pawn to grab. Black gets very, very quick development and uh, also a lot of squares. So white is not really uh, hunting that pawn um, in recent games. The move knight e2, yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, knight e2, e6, castles. <clears throat> That's what we see in the game. But now black, black has developed this bishop to f5. Now we get some... Typical Karokan type of positions. You have its third move, e5 and then c4. However, with a big twist, that black pawn is still on c7, so suddenly black can develop the knight to c6, which puts some pressure on the center. Okay, well... I mean, just very, uh... very quickly, because as we say, yeah, we have time uh, just to show what, what I'm talking about, that if we see this from the Karokan, we see it usually from this move or the e5, bishop f5, c4, then something like e6, knight c3, and then sooner or later, black takes on c4, bishop takes c4. Very similar structure, but we see black's knight on instead of g8 is already on d5, and pawn is not, there is no tempo wasted on c6. Black can also play knight c6 like Levon played. So it's, it's a completely similar structure, but a completely different story. And uh, yeah, knight c6, knight b6, knight b6 on the board. 
knight b6. So the question here is, of course, do you drop the bishop to b3 or put it on b5? If you drop it to b3, um, can black play knight a5 there? Is that a typical idea, just to get some squares? Well, I mean, okay, you, you want to hunt then my bishop. Yeah, bishop b3. Because if you go knight a5, I'm simply going to trade. I, I need to trade these bishops, yeah, especially if you go sideways with your knight. Yeah, I just play bishop c2. And this knight anyway belongs to d5. Yeah, you will have to return to c6. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't have to play knight a5. You can play knight b4 also. Or queen d7 simply. <laughs> and, and tempt long castles. So we're not ever worried about d5 here as black, black, as black basically, because that's my concern. That's, uh, I mean, can we ever go d5 or is it just way too premature? I think at the moment it's probably premature. And uh, I mean, white is not yet developed. The pawn yeah. on e5 is also hanging. Besides, black can just take and then go long castle and we are in some trade. We definitely don't want to trade queens. <clears throat> that's uh, obvious. So... <clears throat> I'm expecting yes. uh, simple yes, moves, bishop. yeah, like bishop e3, long castle, and then maybe some a3, rook c1, and some slow maneuvering, and black will break with f6. It might get very, very sharp. Maybe it's Absolutely. already very sharp. It could really get sharp, actually. Yeah, rook c1 is kind of the automatic move, or a3, as you said, but... Uh... Does white have any other ideas here? Yeah, sometimes they also play moves like queen c1, rook d1. Also, I think it's some typical mm. way of uh, trying to maybe push d5 or so. But uh, <clears throat> as I said, I'm not a big expert. Maybe uh, here you need some very, very energetic. I mean, this is the point. You need to know the position because making natural, simple moves like queen c1, rook d1, or a c first and then rook c1, it's easy to make. But maybe it's not what the position demands. Yeah, it's... Uh, Every position is so specific nowadays. Okay. I like queen c1, rook d1 somehow, though. It feels, feels nice to have the rook on d1 because the queen feels a little bit uh, suspicious on d7 because then d5 breaks really do become a, a serious idea. So yes, I like we should this also, also mention that, for example, a move like queen d2 runs into the tactics with knight takes e5, yeah? Just to to highlight that we are pinned and this this would just lose the game. So yeah, one needs to pay attention. Yeah, Queen C1 on the board. Yeah, where is where is listening to the broadcast? Lawrence approved the move Queen C1, and uh, where he thinks okay, if Lawrence approved it, it should be fine. Queen C1, Rook D1 comes next. Very natural. I mean, very yeah. natural. Yeah, Wei Yi knows his knows his stuff. Rook D one, knight B four. Okay, but this uh, okay, it's kind of logical because you're hunting the uh, the squares, but uh, at the same time, you know, uh, yeah, know. hunting high and low. Yeah, the famous Aha song because. This, this this night before, okay, where is this heading? Heading to d5. One of those important things with, with a square like d5 is that only one knight can occupy it. Yeah, that's that's the very famous story behind when two knights are eyeing the same uh, weak, weak square, yeah, where they want to land. But only one of them can. And if knight from b4 goes to d5, then the knight on b6 will feel a little bit uh, unhappy. You were a big AHA fan, were you, Peter? Well, I, I loved it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. The only generation. AHA song I know, I, th well, I think it's AHA, is Take On Me. And they had the animated video. Exactly. They had the this video? wonderful video. Yeah. Sun that's... always shines on TV. But uh, I also love the, I do, I mean, the cry this uh, uh, crying in the rain. I mean, this is uh, incredible, beautiful lyrical song as well yeah I'm, I'm a big big aha fan i don't remember crying in the rain i'll have to uh have a look afterwards 
Yeah, um, then we, we talk tomorrow about it, yeah. <laughs> because actually it's one, one of the players will do. I mean, it, it's, um, somebody will win and the other one will cry, yeah, because it's, uh, they, they both want to win the event. That's it. Nigisly clever because uh, White is heading towards the E4 square. The big question will be which knight will land on E4, which might also go towards C5. Very, very interesting. And I, I just love it that uh, Vey is also finding a way how to challenge Levon. Yeah, because after E4, when you ask me the question what Levon is doing or what Vey wants to do, and then uh, he has to deal with the Petrov, he has to deal with uh, Berlin or anti Berlins, he has to deal with Marshals. I mean, uh, where does he want to target Levon? Yeah, and then D4, immediately one could sense that, ah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. Getting a um, few crashes on my computer. Bear with me, guys, as I'm restarting some stuff. I'm kind of here, but not here, so to speak. Very weird. Okay. So, Bishop G6 on the board. And what now by Wei Yi? Knight C E4, possibly? Yes, to... Knight C4, Knight G4. The big question, yeah, that how much will H5 disturb us ah. if we go Knight C4, yeah? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why Knight G4. Yes. yes. And also the Knight on C3 still kind of keeps an eye on, on the D5 square. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's uh, also very, very important. This is actually a bit un pleasant for black isn't it because it's not clear exactly like what the plan is in my opinion whereas whereas white has just got you know knight c5 ideas okay yeah let's say bishop e7 okay yeah, on so, the board. so if i go knight c5 is that too soon well, it's not clear. Do you want to commit already or not? And secondly, probably Black anyway has a nice re reaction with Queen C6. Ah, I mean, to be honest, I was thinking like Bishop E7 followed by Queen C6 anyway, maybe what Black wants. Yeah, and right. He can just sit and now we already have some stats like Bishop C5, DC and Knight D3 suddenly using this Rook and the Bishop. So very delicate position. Yeah, and Levon is... has big time advantage. Again, six minutes up on the clock. We don't know if this is preparation or just Levon knows more or less the ideas and he relies on, on them, knowing that uh, Valley could have not expected this line to happen. Okay. Very, very tense position, actually. Yeah, and also very interesting that the tournament is kind of an online rapid event, but we are getting quite a lot of uh, theoretical uh, information and uh, discussion here in the Queen's Gambit accepted. We are getting more and more clever. Yeah, White plays FC, seemingly an ugly move, but first of all, it gives the chance for White to retreat his bishop to F2 if Black goes knight d5. And also, secondly, he already covers the e4 knight, for example, against Queen c6. It's a very good prophylactic. Already, I'm, I'm expecting that maybe Levon wants to break with f6, but if f6 happens, then knight c5 and pawn on e6 is hanging. Very interesting. You, you can't play f6 yet, and if you want to play queen c6 to provoke f6, then already Vey will have his antidote probably prepared. Interesting. You prefer white here, Peter? Well, it's very interesting that like some 20 years ago, my chess understanding, I was also a Karokan player and so on, would tell me that, okay, I'm very happy here with black. Yeah, Tony Miles, kind of chess school. Yeah, you have the D5 square to sit on and so on. But, but of course, modern chess and computer so on uh, teach us that space advantage and all pieces on the board uh, might uh, give quite a lot of dynamics in such positions. So yes, with a modern eye, I feel like white should be better, but white should also know exactly what to do because it's very easy to, to lose the grip of the position. Interesting. 
Lebanonian. Still a lot of time up on the clock. Four minutes advantage. And... But deep in thought about how to proceed. Not clear at all the correct way. Yeah, not at all. I mean, what is the move that do you play queen c6? Because it's kind of the most natural move. But now you feel that white has played fc anticipating queen c6. Yeah, that's the reason why you don't want to step into a direction which your opponent anticipates. Yeah. You would love to surprise him, but I think this is a real issue that after f6, white has knight c5. This is crucial because uh, the queen is attacked, the knight has the e6 pawn, and now, of course, black can't take on c5 with the queen on d7 pinned because knight d3 doesn't help. White can even take on d3 or first take on b6, and we will have two pieces for the, for the, for the rook. So... You probably have to play queen c6 in order to play f6, but then you also step into some... I mean, the, the queen on c6 will not feel so happy. Uh, a big big strategical question, which I don't know, as I said, I'm not an expert, that after queen c6, a move like bishop g5, does this help white, or since we have space advantage, we shouldn't change pieces, even if it looks good for us? I mean... Uh, we, I we don't do like get, it. Yeah, you get the c5 square, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's strange, yeah? Feels wrong to me, but then again, what do I know? Um, no, feels a little... But okay, yeah. we have to wait for black... I mean, queen c6, I think, is a very difficult move to play. Very difficult move. Yeah, what, what to do otherwise? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, mean it's... I also don't feel like playing rook h8, it doesn't really help. I don't feel like black wants to go knight d5 before it gets kicked. Yeah, with a3, so the knight d5 is, would definitely surprise me. And queen c8, wow, queen c8, really? Queen c8. Aronian esque, mysterious. Hate the move, but who am I? I don't even get it. What's the idea? So he, he just doesn't believe the queen is well placed on d7, didn't like it on c6, and says, okay, I put it on c8. Yeah, he wants to sidestep from this knight c5 tempo. Yeah, it, it really disturbed him, but I mean, if queen c8 had to be played, then it means that white is better, that's, that's for sure. I mean, maybe he just insists on f6, yeah, that he now that he moved the queen, he wants to go f6 immediately. But it's, it's passive. I mean, it's so hard to, to believe in this move. And let's take a look at Vayi. I mean, what do you read from... I mean, I read nothing yeah, from his face. Well, I don't think you read anything from his face ever. If he's winning, if he's, he's, got, a, he's got a very good poker face. Uh, so... Yeah, yeah, but Levon, Levon is eating some pistachio, so what is he having there? Pistachios or nails? One of the... Yeah, I mean, what? something he's eating. No, I he's feel not... like he's eating pistachios. Yeah, pistachios. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I like pistachios. I like wal walnuts. Ah, wal okay. Wal yes, that, that's, that's a different story, yeah. Yeah, a bit of walnuts. Oh, sunflower seeds. Yes, with the shell. Yes. Sunflower seeds gives you energy. Yeah, all these nuts are supposed to give you energy, no? I mean, I love almonds. I really love almonds a lot. Almonds. Almonds. You, are you an almond milk kind of guy as well? No, no, I'm a rice drink guy. You're a what? Rice I mean, drink? I drink rice drink. Rice. Rice drink, yeah. Oh, okay. And, and all the way, all the way from 95, I remember that in those days you, you couldn't get rice drink in Hungary. And uh, there was only some British firm who was producing it. And then whenever, you know, somebody went to, we told him that, no, no, you have to bring rice drink. It's very, very important for us because we are not drinking milk. Yeah. So it was uh, essential to, to have. Now, luckily, of course, we already have all this, all these opportunities. 
Rice. Rice. All right. Rice, sunflower seeds. It's anyone's game. Um, Waii eats zero, by the way. Knight c5 on the board. Okay. Yeah, Don't but I'm, why I'm not liking, to... you know, I'm not liking knight c5 exactly for the reason that what I told you with fc, uh, where he was kind of inviting queen c6 level and said, no, thank you. And with queen c8, he kind of invited knight c5 that I sidestepped from knight c5. If you want to play, please play it. And, and where he somehow opted for it. I feel like it might ease black's task a bit. Strange. Slightly okay. Strange, yeah. Okay, a bit, bit of uh, interesting back and forth here. Yeah, I think it's a typical position that is very, very difficult to play objectively correctly in, in a rapid play, yeah, because you have the pressure on the clock, you will have to make a move even if you are not sure what to play, and uh, making any decisions that should I play AC first or should I go knight c5 or should I just keep the tension, so difficult to answer, yeah, it's uh, probably that's, that's the reason that Vey is under some time pressure and he wants to force matters, yeah. I think that that explains the, the choice with knight c5. And Levon grabs the momentum. This is exactly what I was worried of. Yeah, that takes six and then takes on d1, get rook d8 tempo, and then you might sit on the d5 square. What is black's problem now? Yeah, this isn't... Uh, this, looks, this looks decent now for black. So rook d8. Or oh, 95 straight away. Interesting. Can I take? And if Rook D, he doesn't want to go 95, Rook D8, he doesn't want to try and no, get. No, 95, 95, yeah. Okay, Bishop D5. And then Rook D8 already. D6. Doesn't work or? No, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't hurt me at all. No, it doesn't. Rook D5, Queen A4, B6, yeah. you have, yeah. Okay, so 95, 95. Okay. Yes. Okay, 95, yes, 95. Ah, okay, what Levon wanted not to be in this bishop g5 tempo. I mean, that, that was the reason why he did not uh, include rook d8. Because otherwise then white would have this bishop g5 move. Ah. That's, that, that's, I think, the explanation of all this. For example, just to highlight this, yeah, that it was so tempting to include rook d8, but... For example, rook d8, queen e2. Now, if black does exactly the same, then after takes, takes, bishop g5, black gets a big tempo after rook d7, maybe even c6 is something unpleasant, practically speaking, breaking the structure. And if you play f6, then you might end up losing some pawn or at least you destroy your own structure because bishop d5, rook d5, bishop f6, rook takes c5, this is ugly. White's bishop is very, very powerful. You have weaknesses. And white has a safe king. White would be slightly better here, I guess. So Levon tries to be very, very smart by going knight d5 immediately. All right. Well, let's say I just uh, retreat the bishop to... Uh, let's say I go to f2. Just hold rook d8. Rook d8, yeah, let's go. And now some queen... Probably e1, no? Because I can come out to a5. I control the b4 square. So let's say queen e1. I understand knight f4, knight e3 is in the position, but somehow I'm not that bothered by it. Yeah, it's a big question. I think I'm going to use the momentum to go knight Yeah, probably you do, right? Yeah. And I just can't... Maybe here I can try bishop h4, because the rook also doesn't have... An absolutely obvious square. And if you play rook d7, I take the chance and play c6. No, no, I'm going to go rook d4. Rook d4. Okay, so you're... Okay, probably here I have to go like... Can I go c6 again here? Wow, but I feel like my pieces are now super active and your bishop on h4 is... Ah, my bishop is yeah? loose. And I want knight d3. That's why uh, I felt like rook d4 was super important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can always go bishop f2. 
Yeah, but okay, then first of all, you came from F2, yeah? So I'm not... Yeah, <laughs> could be a weird repetition. Yes, I mean, your last move was Bishop H4 and you were proud of it. So, okay, if, if you want to come <laughs> back, please, please come back. True. Yeah, knight d5. Okay. I mean, yeah, where he's taking his time because he's done to 2 minutes 50 yeah. seconds. I mean, he's really burning a lot of time. Shows how important the position is. He feels that this is a very critical moment. Because probably if he doesn't want uh, anything, then he can just play it safe. But uh, spending so much time means that he wants to... I mean, he would love to use the momentum. Bishop g5, correct. Very nice. Yeah, because why to go bishop f2, bishop h4, if you can go bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, right? Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Okay, but uh, and queen d7, bishop a4, also locking the queen, mm. not, not allowing the queen to get active. But okay. then, can you contemplate c6, or is it too ugly? Yeah, because then already the knight can never move because something lands on d6. Right. That, that's, that, that's already some completely new dynamic then in the position if black plays c6, this d6 square. All right, so I'm loving what Vey is doing, but he is a little too slow. H6, Bishop H4, yeah, Levon, Levon will use this moment. Maybe he will just sacrifice the pawn. Bishop F5 and he wants G5 and says, like, please take this pawn. Anyway, going to go G5, Bishop E6, so Queen E6, I get this blockade, this Berlinish structure. Yeah, we know exactly how powerful this Bishop E6, G5 structure is. I wouldn't be surprised if Levon would do that. On the other hand, maybe you don't have to sacrifice. Maybe you don't have to be desperate. But I don't feel that it's desperate. It's just a very, very solid, healthy way of, of treating things. By the way, for all of you guys uh, watching who uh, who get who've got these little uh, curiosities about coincidences in chess or patterns in chess, the move queen to c8 from the black side has been one of the key, key single moves in both games. In the first game, queen c8 was interesting, and now queen c8 here also on the board. Very rare for queen to c8 to appear in back-to-back -back, uh, games. And Levon opts for knight b4. Okay, so he wants to create some mess with knight d3. But okay, since he can't play rook d8, I mean, I don't think that the knight can really stay for too long on, on d3. It's more like white would love to play queen d4, but that allows knight c2, knight c6. Now, nah, I mean, too many moves. And where he's done to do two minutes, knight b4 is a move that forces white to burn time. Because you start asking yourself, what does my opponent want? Where is this knight really going? And exactly those questions, level, yeah, queen d4 is played, it's the natural move. Yeah. I'm starting to like Wei's position more and more with every move, actually. Well, but don't be fooled because it's only so nice because the bishop is on h4. However, if black will ever get the pawn to g5, right. that will solve all this problem and rook right. 8 will come to with the tempo. So and? it might be some kind of a mirage at this moment. But the big question, yeah, now knight c6 is a tempo, and for example, after knight c6, black could try to move the bishop and go g5, but once the knight goes to c6, white will have bishop a4, targeting that knight as well, and, or maybe trying to go some b4, b5 quickly. And that's why Levon is taking his time. And besides, there is also this other argument to go knight c2, yeah, black can trade, but... I did not like it because white gets the d file. That looks dangerous. Yeah, knight c6 on the board. It's the, yes. the natural move. 
queen uh, c3 or e3 which square but queen c3 looks more natural to me yes i mean just to support some b4 yeah just for for the exactly b4. precisely yeah but the, i mean still okay he goes queen is still now the bishop will move and then g5 will come and no but this is a clever move also by way because i think he wants to in some positions play bishop f2 and but i will anyway leave the knight on c6 so let me just play bishop f5 immediately okay yeah maybe not I mean, I just want g5, rook d8. Please play bishop a4, bishop takes c6. I'm going to take b takes c6, and I'm going to enjoy my d file, and, and there is nothing there on the king's, I mean, queen side. I don't know what where he wants now. Maybe just something very, very small and, and simple, like bishop f5, rook d1, simply. And okay, I can also make the moves. Bishop f5, rook d1, not to give the g5, I mean the d5, g5, bishop e1. And after rook d8, maybe just trade and put the bishop on c3 and try to cover all the empty squares and then claim that maybe after we will play, uh, for example, just to highlight like bishop c3, if we can play bishop c4 and then b4 slowly. But I'm not, not a believer in this position. I think black should be fine. So I don't know what he wants. Yeah, somehow black is just, just. Bishop wow. h5. Wow, I mean, Levon is really getting ambitious. He wants to do some fancy stuff with g5, g4, or what? Uh -huh. G4! Ho, 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 ho. G5. G5! Of course. Look at this. Bishop g3, bishop g6, one minute 41 for yeah, Wei yeah. but And black is perfectly fine. I mean, black is... Yeah. Look at this harmony. I mean, knight on c6, bishop g6, pawn on g5. Now white has lost the control of, of, the, of this h4, d8 diagonal, rook d8. Yeah, there is just absolutely no worry for Levon. In fact, I believe that white is the one who, with little time on the clock, should be very, very careful and, and just liquidate somehow. But how to liquidate? Rook d2. Maybe white needs to play rook, but then rook d7. I mean, rook d2, I'm going to play rook d7 mm -hmm. and this with queen d8. Rook d7, bishop a4? Yes. You and have. play this horribly passive opposite color bishop position? I don't know. But that's miserable. Miserable. Yes. It might be draw, but it's going to be miserable anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oof, yeah. Very under pressure. Does Wei Yi hold this one, Peter? Well, he needs to because we, we kind of said that the first two games should end in a draw. That's what we expect. Can we do something like Rook D2, Rook D7, H4? Yeah, you can. But I mean, it's still very, very dangerous. I don't know. Because then uh, Rook D2, Queen D2, GH and E5 is hanging. It's not but, so easy. Yeah, but okay. I don't take back on H4, right? I play some move like Ah, bishop h2, h5 is annoying. Then h5, yeah. Okay, he takes, yeah, he has to, he just has to accept that actually he needs to defend a bit this position. The only question is with this little time on the clock, how is it, it will be? Because black has some jumps. Yeah, this knight is very, very mobile. Black will also play a6, create luft and start jumping. 40 right. seconds only. For... Yeah, White probably will make a move like King G2 and H3 quickly just to gain those uh, 10 seconds. Getting ready that whenever Black's Knight jumps somewhere, then White wants to go Queen D4. Yeah, forget about uh, every... I mean, I, I give the Bishop, I will be ready to be slightly worse, but just trade Queens and make a draw. Clever, clever decision, Bishop F2. Very clever. Because after all, without jumping with the knight, actually black can't really make any progress. Yeah, it's uh, the no no anti squares. Should, should yeah, where he should hold. Yeah, now now he knows that he's definitely not playing for advantage, so he can speed up. Oh, 
All right, Levon Aronian, six minutes 40. Can he engineer something like we well like we've seen? Has he got a way to to cause Wei some practical problems? I don't see it. I don't see a way, really. Yeah, I also, I mean, okay, he can make natural moves like A6, but it does not change the, um, the course of the game. For example, the move Queen H8 targeting the E5 pawn forces Bishop G C back, but uh, it's no problem because when the Queen moves, I don't need to control the D4 square and then you come back, I also come back. So it's, uh, I mean, maybe Levon now feels that he would love to try to get some practical chances due to the clock situation. Mm, and then maybe he might be willing to take some risk, but maybe the position just does not allow anything. Uh, hang on, hang on. There would be a nice idea if we could reshuffle the bishop to c6 and the knight to, to g6. Yeah, For example, bishop mm. d3, bishop b5, bishop c6, and the knight goes to g6. That would be lovely, but the problem is that also Beck has to watch out for some timely c6. That's a, that's an incredible little maneuver. Yeah, if if we could really switch those, then then Black would almost be winning. Yeah, because suddenly FC would be very vulnerable. Knight is jumping, uh, the bishop is brilliant on the long diagonal, but it just does not seem realistic. Okay, so what else can you do here with Black? Do you have any useful waiting moves? No, everything is perfect, yeah? That, that's the problem. I mean, how to improve the position? Knight b4, okay, now queen d4 will be played. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, yeah, queen d4 on the board. And why did Levon do this? I mean, what is he expecting from this? Does this force the, the, the trade of queen? What did he want here? <coughs> yeah, but I mean, if he trades the queens, then okay, then already he can never be better. So he's just trying to set up a blockade, which means that he was not sure of just sitting. Yeah, I mean, it's quite surprising. Yeah, b5, of course, is, is a clever move. Yeah, so he wants also to bring his king closer, but uh, he's inviting c takes b6, then black takes a, b, and then goes c5 with counterplay. It's all understandable, but yeah, c, b. Bishop c3. I mean, it looks very, very drawish, yeah? I mean, also with 40 seconds on the clock, for example, after knight d5, we are, ah, then, then bishop d2, yeah, and c5, bishop c4. That's that's how where you would love to, I mean, just to make this move, this, this. And if c5, then bishop c4 timely stopping any b5, and then white will have this h4 in the pocket, like you mentioned before. This is this move is still there. So I'm not expecting Levon to go along these lines. Knight d3, yeah, eyeing the e e5 pawn, mm -hmm. not allowing bishop d2. Mm -hmm. Bishop c4, very, very, very professional. Now it will be in his hands uh, that whenever if he feels uncomfortable, he can just take and, and make a draw. But now he knows that he has the two bishops. He has ideas like going a4, a5, for example, breaking some structure and, and making sure that black will not have these connected dangerous uh, pawns. Maybe somehow to also get king f1, king e2 in. Kicking this knight away. Can they maybe start to think of getting ambitious? I'm I'm not sure, but at least he's completely completely safe. Knight f4. So now maybe some. Can you try to go around the houses and play a move like bishop b4, bishop f8? Okay, he goes bishop d2. Yeah, yeah, bishop, bishop b4 over c5. c5, yeah. Sorry, there's c5. I beg your pardon. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, but bishop f4, I'm expecting the move bishop d3 from Levon. Yeah, then that's the justification of knight f4. Uh, 
Maybe and he the, wants to put the knight on g6 and then sit tight like this, yeah, that I'm the e5 pawn, making sure that no breaks with h4 are possible. And then, okay, please show me how you can, yeah. And where he says, thank you very much, enough is enough. Takes, now he will play bishop e3 and go h4. Yeah. Okay. It's basically a draw. Basically a draw. Mm -hmm. Ah, he will actually break with so f4. f4. Yeah, I was he about will, to say. Yeah. Hold on. This yeah, is... but I mean, okay, black always has bishop b1 later to cover everything. I mean, it's yes. not. And, and king is marching also over, so it's it's not a winning attempt. All right, I'm kind of happy that we, we had two interesting games, but our predictions still stand. Yes, that's the most important thing. Yeah, is that our prediction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I feel like we, we are getting into some jeopardy, right? Because for the next game, you claim that they might win with black. I claim that the match will end in 2 2, but I'm expecting that there will be some uh, exchange of blows. So the match is only heating up. That is true. That is true. I don't know why I, I had a feeling for the. Normally what happens if I, if I feel like Wei Yi's going to win game three, he actually loses in five moves. Um... <laughs> no, 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 no. Wow, C5, okay. But it doesn't, doesn't matter. So guys, please don't uh, think that this evaluation bar suddenly jumps in White's favor. Yes, White might be better, but it's, it's just a draw. I mean, Bishop B1 always protects the diagonal, so whenever white pushes all the way, it, it leads nowhere, white, black skin gets to d5, but look at this, evolution bar keeps on climbing, what is this? How on earth is uh, every, I mean, the, the engines think that white gets serious winning chances? King f4? Okay, king okay. f4, it's correct, yeah, it's understandable, I mean, king f4 and then bishop f6 and then you push. And then the king goes to h6 to g7. But g7, I mean, yeah. But come on, I mean, who will hold these guys? I mean, we, we all understand that this king, uh, king, king goes there, but... Wow. So Tyr is saying this is all she wrote. Can it be? Wow, I mean, apparently, according to computers, this is now winning for white. Uh, I still find it... You know, it would be incredible if with 50 seconds on the clock, White would be able to convert because, okay, that's why Levon uh, was careless because he just relied on his intuition that with these pawns coming, White will never be able to, to, to create winning chances on the king side. Yeah, so he did not want to stay passive and so on. Well, Bishop B1, I mean, okay, this would be one of the biggest sensations if, if White goes on to win this. With 30, 30, 40 seconds on the clock. Ah, okay. Basically, wh what is it that can you actually put? I mean, just h4, h5, g5, and then remove the king, and then trying to no, but I, I don't. Yeah, bishop d8 played. Bishop e7, and where is finding the idea? He's finding the idea that he wants to. Yeah, because the bishop on e7 actually stops black of pushing both b4 and c4. Yeah, so after c4 here, you put the bishop on d6, or where do you put it? Or do you put the bishop on b4? Yeah, he's, he's just freezing this. Well, I mean, bishop d6, I thought like maybe f6 is a move, but maybe f6 just uh, destroys my construction, and then you will have two pass pawns. Mm. Hang on, but now Levon is going crazy, because if... Uh, if he realizes that he's now in trouble, that would be the worst thing because he has to signal to his opponent like nothing happened. Okay, you are playing well, but it's not going to be enough. But if he starts to think and he goes down on the clock, then he actually gives the time for Wei to realize that uh, Levon is worried and the, the more optimistic he gets about his chances. Yeah, if, if C4, then Bishop B4. Yeah, that's, that's the fixage. I mean... Wow. Wow, wow, yeah. And then so he puts then, the bishop on b4. 
Yeah, and then all this, all these kind of things, and f7 pawn is about to fall. Then yeah, that's uh, white can even sacrifice the bishop later for the. Mm. Wow, I mean, this is maybe then I don't know. This is a shocking development. Oh my goodness. Levon will be sick to his stomach if he loses this game. Way ye. Way ye. <laughs> we didn't. He was struggling. He was in trouble. And now just bishop b4. As you said, put the bishop on b4. Put the bishop on c3. Walk the king to f6. Sack the bishop for the two pawns. Win the f7 pawn and run the g pawn. Yeah, he started with h4. Okay, it does not. I mean, he still has time to get his bishop to b4. Yeah, just bishop b4 now. Just but stop. Okay, still, it's so easy to say, but I mean, it runs into some king dc, king c2, king b3 ideas. Yeah, so he pushes the h pawn first. Basically, he says, like, I don't need bishop b4 yet because c3, b takes c3, king c3. Then king, king g5, five. and then sacrificing yeah. the bishop and going king f6 would be, of course, a dream scenario for white. So Levon will not Indeed. let this happen exactly. He wants to get his king to beast, I mean, uh, attack the b2 pawn. And Can you go h6, forcing king d2, and then you sit the bishop on c3? And then your king comes g5, f6, and he... Then you win a lot of tempo, yeah. Exactly. Yes. It's, it's over. Oh Finito. my God! Wow. I mean, okay, it's still far believe. from over, but yeah, it seems like White might be winning. Levon in shock. He doesn't understand what's happened. He had everything under control for the whole game, pretty much. And all of a sudden, Harry the H pawn galloping up the board. And what to do? The king g5, king f6 idea is unstoppable. King d4, you just put the bishop on b4, back to c3. Yeah, and look at this. Yeah, just, just now Levon is realizing that this is, uh, this is catastrophe. But it's too late. Yeah, he starts, tries king e2. He wants to come from behind. Yeah, it's a typical way of defending in bishop and games. But I don't think that this can really help. First of all, bishop c5 might be very clever just to, to cover some squares. No, bishop b4 played. Apparently, big mistake. Bishop g6, the tempo. Big mistake! The engine bar hated it. Why yeah, wow, he... because yeah, king g5 always king f3. So that, that was Levon's idea. So actually White had to rush probably with king g5, king oh, f3, wow. king f6 till the pawn was hanging. King g2. Wow. Wow, wow. Levon survived. Incredible. What a turnaround. Incredible stuff. What a resource. What a player, Levon Aronian, to find this idea to come over to. I mean, this is what makes him so special. Yeah, it's so incredible to find these ideas. Okay, yeah, and and the, the reason why it was so shocking and so effective that where he felt like, okay, now I got the winning plan, I will just move my bishop and then I'm coming. But after King E2, it became move pen move. It, it became a move pen move -ish story. And, and he had to run King G5, King F6. It was, uh, it was a very, very big trick by Levon. Wow. Unbelievable stuff, King F3. Yeah, but okay, now there is just no danger, yeah, because the, the king is not reaching F6. So there is nothing to, to worry about. Wow, this will now hurt very big time, yeah? There was a yeah. golden opportunity from, from nothing to win the game, yeah, because it was... Okay, one could argue that right from the start, White was apparently slightly better, but it was just a normal position. Levon was willing to, to take that. And, uh, and then he got absolutely no problems. And then he was kind of, okay, then let's make a do. And then suddenly that's why he collapsed, because he, he got completely careless, but survives. Oh, 
finally survives. What an incredible resource, yeah, with the king marching, oops. Marching yeah. towards the king's side. Brilliant stuff, Le Monoronium. Way you realizing probably now that no way. Yeah, now you just move the bishop. Now you just move the bishop. Yeah, it's not Zugzwang. Bishop anywhere. Or okay. Also it's the good. same. It's the same. Because King G5, King F3, I mean that's that's the only thing that it was important. Now King H3 back. So there was a moment where where you missed King G5 instead of Bishop B4, right? That was the the critical yes. moment. Yes, exactly. We will we will get back to it because it was so critical. Yeah, now they are just moving back and forth, back and forth. I mean, Wei is hoping for a, for a miracle that Levon will suddenly place his pieces, but it will never happen already. Yeah, King G5, King F3, that's, that's the key. Because now King F6, already the F7 pawn is protected, yeah? Now King yeah. G3. Waiting, always keeping an eye on the G4 pawn. That's the key. And the rest is easy. Nothing to discuss. Wow, I'm, I'm feeling like this uh, game three will be incredible spectacle because both players are getting a bit fed up. Yeah, the, first of all, they also feel like uh, I mean, it can't go on forever like this that it will end in a draw. Yeah, at, at some point, uh, one of them will use the opportunity and they want to make sure that it's going to be them. I've got a bad feeling about my game three prediction now for the way E black win. If he had found King G5 and won this, it was finito. Game three. But now, oof, I'm nervous. But maybe he's a machine and has no emotion. Maybe he doesn't care that this he, he had a winning position. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that's of course an incredible big uh, advantage if you can think like this. Yeah, that you just uh, can ignore and and just focus on the next game. Yeah, the problem being that if White insists on trying to win the bishop, then uh, he's risking. Yeah. Because after king g7, king f5, okay, you first have to protect the pawn, but actually you can never really win because after h7 takes, takes, I mean, the black will be so active and uh, you have to be careful. So white is not, not risking this. He just sits here and, and we're going to see a draw. Wow, and I mean, when you look look back, you know, it was yeah. so trivial. It was so trivial. But right. also, you remember my my first thought like, ah, okay, we're going to go bishop c5 and then we win. Uh, but in fact, king, king g5 and then king f6 immediately was very important. Yeah, nothing is happening yeah. already. But where he has to make sure not to lose on time. That would be ridiculous. That would be the, okay, but suddenly he gets disconnect or some problem with internet. Yeah. I mean, just make a draw already. There just is make just, a draw. No, no reason to fool around here. Yeah, I don't know what he's trying. Yeah, that's it. All right. The wow. Good. Draw agreed. Let's go to that moment, Peter. It's, uh, well, you can see there, two draws so far on day one of this final. Let's have a look at that critical moment in the end game. Here, Wei Yi played the move bishop b4, but he had to go with the king first, king g5. And now after king f3, you can go king f6, attacking f7. The point is that now after bishop g6, you can play the move g5, consolidating the pawns. And now king g7, h7 is an unstoppable threat. Um... But instead, bishop b 
Yeah, and if you take here, you can just take, followed by king g7. And h7 wins the bishop and the game. Bishop e4 gave up a vital tempo, though. Huge blunder by Wei Yi instead of king g5, meaning that the black king got involved too quickly here after bishop b4. Now bishop g6 happened. And now after king g5, king f3, the difference is g4 cannot be held on to. And white has got no way to break through. Yeah, wow. It's, I mean, what a missed opportunity. I mean, one thing yeah. we should still show, like after king takes uh, g4, king takes f7. Okay, we are setting to take on, on e6. If black plays bishop f5, white plays king g7, I mean... There is still this kind of danger that Black's king is threatening to run towards the B2 pawn. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's kind of a race. So I don't know exactly if now the bishop b4, king c2, bishop b3 kind of uh, method, king b3, king g6. Mm -hmm. I thought like this is the clean way, yeah, bishop b4, mm -hmm. and then after c3, we always take with the bishop, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we win like this thanks to one tempo. Mm -hmm. yeah? I mean, that's kind of an illustration that uh, what could have happened. And uh, yeah, what a missed opportunity. Just King G5 and after King G5, there would have been no way of uh, stopping Vayi. That That's for sure. All right. So the question is, is Vayi going to be able to compose himself? Is he really a machine and just doesn't care? Plays another game of chess? We'll soon find out. Before we go to break, remember, 40% off your premium memberships. Use the hashtag... Sorry, not the hashtag, the um, code Road to Miami in the checkout and get that year premium for another extra month uh, free of charge. Next game kicks off in about, I guess, 12, 13 minutes time. We'll be back for game three. Aronian with the white pieces. Is he going to take that momentum and take that, you know, that, that, uh, that save, it feels like more than half a point when you save a position like that um, into the next game with White. Where he showed a bit of imprecision in game one. Is Aronian going to try and improve on that? We'll soon find out. Stay tuned for game three of the final. Field is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video, we're going to look at the latest developments in the six bishop g5 knight rook. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. It's, no, it's just to move. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. What do you think about this opening? Honestly, what do you think you about don't have to play knight c3. We can actually put a piece on d2, which is better, because then we avoid the potential doubling of our c pawns. What you have to understand about practical endgames as a whole is that just like in the middle game or the opening, um, you cannot rely uh, solely on these general considerations.
This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Our starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Seriously? Checkmate. Aim Chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew. Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. Hi there, it's me. John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented Aim Chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com, Lee Chess, or Chess24 account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> Now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good! Hi, it's me, that guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, sick luscious hair. Intuition Builder. All this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? What? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs> that's so f***ing dumb.
dumb. Aim checks for when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. That's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's look, it, just sign up for aim chess, okay? Just come on. Literally, why not? All right, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. All right? Jesus Christ. Chess, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Hello everyone and welcome to this short introduction to the Royal Lopez. So the Royal Lopez is a chess opening that appears after the move e4, black replies e5, we play knight f3, black replies knight c6, and now bishop to b5. This is the, the Royal Lopez. We intend to castle next and we are building uh, some initiative in the center later on by playing the move c3 and hopefully d4. Uh, it's a very solid and reliable opening. It has been played by basically all the world champions throughout the, the history of chess. It has been around for hundreds of years and uh, it can definitely last you a lifetime once you learn it. So I really recommend you all to try out the Royal Lopez. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. and welcome back to this final of the FTX Road to Miami tournament. We've seen two games already and uh, two draws, two fighting draws. Absolutely brilliant stuff. And if you've just joined us, it was Wei Yi who missed a golden opportunity against Levon Aronian in the last game. Levon had everything under control. For the majority of the game, and then something happened in that opposite color bridge bending where he had a chance to snake in his king and win, but his imprecision cost him. And with that, only a draw was possible, meaning it's 1 1. And we go to the third game now. Originally, before the match started, I said, Way ye with the win with black. Not feeling so confident now. Peter, what do we think about this game coming up? Well, I, I really feel that this game is very critical. And I do feel that we might easily see a decisive result here. The big question is who, who will take it? I feel, you know, that Vayi, because always Levon is up on the clock. Yeah, I feel that if all the games will be played like this, that Levon has like eight minutes and, and uh, Vayi is down to two minutes, then the, the probabilities that finally something happens to Vayi are much, much bigger than... Than, than things uh, happening to Levon. Yeah, that's, that's what I feel the most scary about. The, the match itself is, is very, very balanced. Absolutely. In the last All moment, right. Levon leaves his yeah. chair. Yeah, he just, I mean, he wants to do some final, final touch yeah, before the game lifts off. Yeah, that's uh, unusual. And Levon in his patented colorful shirt in typical Levon style. Um, not many people can get away with what he, he wears, but there <laughs> you go. Uh, as you can see, there are two draws, day one. Day two tomorrow, so we do have another day. So even if there is a decisive result today, there will be a chance of bouncing back tomorrow. And if we need to go to blitz and tie break, we will. Levin Aronian has changed his shirt. I'm sure of it. Newsflash. That was not the shirt he was wearing. Am I right? Yes, I think so. Yeah, definitely. 
I so, told you that some last minute, I mean, some finesse yeah, is coming. Yeah. We will be seeing I mean, the same line, yeah, because where he didn't show enough confidence, yeah, we're going to see B3, definitely. Yeah, so we get a repeat here of game one. And where he for sure will have his team of helpers. Maybe he'll play this earlier Queen C8 move. Yeah, I would I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, because it he indicated that he kind of uh, he knew this queen c8 idea, but he just did it in the wrong move order somehow. All right, queen e2. So we've got the same position as that game, and no, uh, c6. Okay, so still the same, but then queen c7. Don't tell me that it's going to be queen c8. It can't be queen c8. Surely not. I mean, you can take d takes e4, b takes e4, queen c7. It was also one of, okay, rook c8. Yeah, that's a sensible, sensible line. Level himself was playing this d takes c4, b takes e4 structure. However, it's, uh, I mean, it's probably fine, but it, uh, it leads to some very fighting position. And also, Levon should have more experience with that structure. So in, in this regard, I like Vey's choice of not, not going for this DC-BC structure because he simply lacks experience there. All right, let's see what they end up going for. Um... Yeah, always the big question that can white play the move knight c3 or not? Yeah, because if you can, then of course you want to put the knight on cc, but the move d5, d4 is irritating. Yeah, that, that's kind of the problem. Uh, so up to white. Yeah, and Levon goes first d3. Yeah, that's the... And look c7. Yeah, 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 yeah. This exists. This is a very, very clever old school uh, reaction. I mean, opening up the way eventually for the queen also to go to a8, maybe to b8. The rook can land also on d7. Yeah, Levon goes knight c3. And also, besides, there is this d5, d4 idea as well, because the bishop is protected. Very, very multi-purpose move, this rook c8, rook c7. Can you d4 go d4? Well, yeah, I was about to say, can you go d4 here with the idea that if you go takes, takes, knight b5, can I just go rook d7 and claim that... This knight on b5 is a bit offside. Exactly. You see, that's that's what all these uh, breaks mean and that uh, some team is working behind the players, that uh, they are definitely checking the line. And who knows? I mean, we didn't have an official uh, statement that Vey was the second of, of Dingley Ren, but I think it's uh, quite obvious. And if so, then wouldn't it be logical that suddenly... Dingley then would be behind uh, Vey in such an important moment. I wouldn't be ruling out. You think Dingley Ren is kind of like on, available on a computer watching this, basically? And well, I mean, Vey is his friend. He has helped him for the candidates, everything. I mean, usually it's kind of a very nice gesture then to, to help your friend back in, in, in a critical moment for himself. So that's why I wouldn't be ruling out. It's not like where he's doing second, uh, second then job. No, no, just helping out uh, for a friend. Mm. E, D, C, D, yeah, knight B5, rook C, rook C7 to D7, exactly, knight E5, this is all forced. Hang on, but this is in my notes. And then knight G4, some, yeah, rook D7, and you can't take on D4. Yeah, this is in my very, very old notes from 2016. Hang on. Some memories are coming back. The, the point being that you can't take on d4. And you can't take on d4 because of knight g4. Or what? Well, yeah, deep, yeah. But how, hang on, how does it go? Knight d4, there was all kinds of bishop c5, knight, all this knight, it's, it's not supposed to work for white, this stuff. That, that was the whole point behind rook c7. And when I also, like in 2016, uh, discovered this rook c8, rook c7 business, I was super, super happy. I forgot already. That's what happens when you don't play chess. Yeah, knight g4. I think knight, knight g4. g4. Okay, so let's say queen e4 looks kind of... Yeah, then you can also sometimes just sacrifice on f2, I think. Ooh. Yeah, takes takes and bishop c5, and then you take on d4 and so on. Wow. Wow, he gets a chance. Knight takes d4 on the board. Level does Wow. 
Night G4, Night F2. Peter Leko, notes from six years ago. Yeah, Before Kukesh was even born. You know, when I was uh, playing with Gary in 97 in, uh, in Tilburg, in the city, yeah, Night G4 on the board. And then I told oh Gary goodness. that I played some line and then Gary told me that, yeah, already in 81 or in, in 79 analyzed, it's losing what you played. Yeah, it was, it was his command. I remember. Wow. Night G4 and, and Night XF2 is coming. And, and will your prediction come true? Oh, come my on. goodness. It could. This is it. This is it. Why ye? With the black pieces. Is he going to put Levon in a spot? Oh, my goodness. And also big time advantage. You remember what we are, we talked about that always where he's low on the clock zone. So now he's not running any risk because the position simplifies. He will just get a technically clearly better position. And uh, he will have enough time to, to, to not deal with this uh, problem with the clock. But there's the, the problem Levon has got is there's just, there's no way, right? No, I mean, you will have to defend a miserable position. That's, that's it. I mean, it's not a losing position, but it's a clear advantage and a very easy one for black because this terrible pawn. I mean, just to illustrate, for example, queen e2, knight takes f2, queen takes f2, bishop c5. We cannot claim that this is winning for black. Yeah, okay, you just play king g2, we take, but incredibly miserable black will just play queen d7, rook d8, puts the pressure on the d3 pawn. Who knows, maybe some e5, e4 using the pin. Uh, if if White tries to stay passive defending the DC pawn, I mean, terrible position. Terrible position. Running into it's it's not a cheap or it's a very deep it's a very deep idea. I've started all with uh, DC Rook C7. It's the whole trick and the justification behind this Rook C8 Rook C7 maneuver. Wow! 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 Incredible. Levon Aronian under the cosh with the white pieces. Not often that Levon gets tricked, or should we say in trouble out of the opening. Very, very unusual. Yes, and then look at this. Yeah, Levon is now getting nervous because, I mean, Levon is Levon. Yeah, he's so tricky, but how to be tricky if you are forced into a miserable position? That's, that's the problem he's faced with. I totally agree. I mean, he definitely looks, uh, searches for some incredible counter strike or, or whatever. I mean, but he also feels that he ran into a computer preparation. Yeah. And, uh, and then he might also understand that it's one thing that he wants some counter strike, but if it does not work, then it doesn't work. For example, let me try the move knight takes e6. If we go along these lines, that let me be Levon Aronian trying to create mess. I mean, you have to take on e5 because I'm setting queen g7 checkmate, right? Whoa. Okay, yeah, but knight takes d8. Knight takes d8. Now, uh, um, now we need some genius move. Maybe some bishop f6. Yeah, maybe bishop f6. Because actually, yeah, knight takes d3, knight c6. Seems to work for white. So bishop f6. This works. This is okay. yeah, and, and the point being that bishop e5, bishop e5, d4 is already met by rook f takes d8 Brilliant. and it's a pin. So no no tricks like this. And okay, knight c6, bishop takes a1, rook a1, probably rook d6. Ah oh, no, rook d6. I, I blunder a some rook c8. Yeah, probably just rook c8. Yeah, but then knight b4, knight d5. So hang on. So basically. What does it mean that, can I hope to survive this? It's not nice, but for example, rook takes dc, knight a7, it's bad because you enter with the rook to d2 and another rook comes, but can I hope for something? Probably what not. What about just taking on d3? 
Exactly, yeah, this is what I say. And then you can look, look. Rook a8 and rook takes b3 might exist. Ah, this also, yeah, this is very nice, yeah. I was actually thinking that somehow rook d2 and then rook, but you are coming back with the knight, maybe in time. So yeah, rook a8. Even rook e1 tempo doesn't help, then you just go king f8. And a2 pawn is hanging, and knight b5, rook b3. Tactical trick means material. Wow. I mean, yeah, this is the line that Levon is definitely trying to, to calculate till the very end to hope that does he find the way to escape or not. If not, then he will have to settle for this miserable position. Yeah, and he goes queen e4. The, the problem is that king e3 runs into e5, so white can't... No, he goes king e3 anyway. He wants to provoke e5. Wow. I mean, he didn't expect the king to be on e3 at this stage of the game, let me tell you that. Um, why can't I just play e5 here? Yeah, well, after e5, I mean, Levon wants to, to provoke the pawn to e5 so that he moves probably the king and then hopes that uh, he can take the e5 pawn so that he will not end up in this miserable structure, yeah? Yes. But whether it works out, move, pen, move or not, that's a very, very big question. Look at this, okay. he's in a state of shock. Can't believe it. King is on e3. This is, this is not a cemento at all. No, this is not Cemento. This is exactly the opposite of Cemento, yeah. This is a loose construction. I mean, okay, E5, let's let's calculate some lines here. Yeah, E5, okay, how so do you, e do you run to, I mean, is he planning to run to F3 maybe? That's what I thought, King F3 here. Yeah. But hang on, then, Bishop B4 and I have Queen F6 yes. check, Intermezzo. You get, hit, you get hit with check. Wow, that's a nice intermezzo. No, but how? Because actually, Bishop takes D4 D4 first. first. Yeah. But then Queen F4 I have. Oh my God. Then I have Queen F4, level one wow. Yeah. Look at this move. <laughs> Escapes. Okay, but what if I go just Rook takes D4 simply? When? Uh, instead of Queen F6 check. Yes, but okay, then at least Levon hopes to be able to grab the pawn, but will he not get checkmated? Rook e8 comes. Also rook e8. Yeah, no, rook e8, that's, that's very, very bad news. And rook takes d3, queen f5, g6, and I... I mean, that was the reason why I wanted to go to f2, but I mean, somehow if going to f2, it, I'm still in the pin, yeah? I, I was yeah. afraid of queen f6 check, and then you take on d4. And, and king d2 would be another move, trying to run to c2. But, okay, for example, you take, take, rook takes, again, queen takes e5, rook e8. Ah, rook e8, queen f5, queen f3, because if you have to take, then king c2 would be, would be nice for white. So probably this is the idea, king d2 is the only chance. Mm -hmm. Still miserable for white. Should be. Definitely should be miserable. You might even be able to take on d4 with the pawn. I mean, it looks a bit strange, but then bishop b4 checks are coming a5, exactly. You put a rook on e8, you double on the e file. Uh, is... Exactly. I mean, it's uh, very, very scary. Wow. I mean, okay, now where he has to make up his mind, yeah, that does he, does he need to hurry? But actually, he probably needs to hurry because white has, white has b4 as a threat. White has B4 threat. And look at this, Tough. look at Levon. I mean, he's in a state of horror. Yeah, he can't believe it, can he? He just cannot believe it. Absolute shock, Levonaronian. Rarely is he in such a spot. And of course, Wei Yi with a huge time advantage. Four minutes extra on the clock. And he goes Rook E8. 
Yeah, Tom, yeah so he, he actually eyes F5. Oh my goodness, what a gorgeous move. And, and also B4, E5 is possible because now B, C5, E, D4 oh. and, and the queen is pinned. Yes. Wow, and then, and then the king on E3 can feel very, very shaky. Brutal move, brutal handling of the position with a tiny little rook E8. Absolutely beautiful play by Wei Yi. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Levonaronian changed his shirt. He might have to change it again after this game. Unbelievable move. Rookie eight. Goodness me. Wei Yi is tuned in. He is on form. But can he convert? Or is Levon going to do what Wei Yi just did to him? Or rather, the other way around. Rookie eight is incredibly strong. What do yeah, you do? And, the, and the point is that he is now controlling the clock. Yeah, that's that's yes. a very very big difference. And actually, hang on. I mean, Levon run with his king too easily, hoping that he will force matters. But if he's not able to force matters, then then this king maneuver too easily might backfire heavily. Absolutely. I mean, okay, let's say the king tries to run. Let's say king d2. Yeah, but then you achieved simply nothing. Then we just right. click on d4 and you are in the miserable position. With, with our lovely pawn structure, yeah, with this pawn on e6. No weaknesses, no targets, nothing. Yeah, king d2 played, but okay, this is... This is a catastrophe. I mean, it's almost lost, yeah, because now queen d6 comes... A5, A4 comes, look, E D8 comes, E5, E4 comes. I mean, this is a total disaster. No, this is a catastrophe. Yeah. Queen D6, you play a tempo here. Rook, rook, rook D8. And then um, you have all the openers there as well. You could play E5, E4, B5, A5, A4. Oof. Goodness gracious. Levon Aronian. Needs a new shirt. Well, yeah, you... wow. I mean, basically, if we are getting closer and closer to the to the prediction, you remember you told that you, you think that where you might get the, the game three, and I was telling, but come on, I mean, it can't be that Black will exactly win the fourth game to bounce back, yeah, because I felt like today's match should end with a 2-2. It just so much at stake and so much tension, and I felt like you know it's gonna be an absolutely fantastic match, yeah, with a lot of ups and downs. But just because exactly the nerves in play, I felt like it it ends with two two. But uh, we might be seeing that very taking the taking the lead. I mean, Levon needs an incredible miracle to survive this. I mean. It's just horrible. There's just relentless pressure here as well. Okay, E5, that's kind of... Okay, I mean, how bad can it be? Maybe he wants... No. I don't know what construction he wants. Maybe he just wants to go F6. Does he want to go F6, Rook E7, Rook D7? And have the... Alakine's gun. Yeah, but somehow it feels too too smart, yeah. Well, he, he opted for Queen D basically Queen D6 and then E5 would have been also natural. He just wants to play natural. He only started with E5. I don't think that he does any other fancy stuff. And he's already eyeing this E5, E4. I mean, definitely he's gonna triple and then tell to his opponent that okay, I mean. My friend, how are you going to deal with e5, e4? Yeah, this is, this is very, very sad for, for Levon and for his fans. Because, okay, Levon is the incredible 
creative genius with all these counterplay issues and and here how does he create counterplay rookie one okay nice little trick i mean trying okay, to use f6? some pin f6 simply i don't see the trick yeah no no i mean i just wanted to show that for example a move like queen g6 runs into op i mean yeah it's always very easy to blunder something but not on this level of course if queen g6 happens i'll fly to budapest myself and give you the money okay <laughs> you you will come with a bike no and you i've got a very bike. old bicycle which i love i ride it around berlin it's beautiful but he's he's causing me issues i need it do, are you a bike do you have a bicycle yes yes i have a road bike i have i have a fitness bike i have yeah i'm very well equipped i'm biking every day i love biking i absolutely love it um i need some good bike suggestions actually tweet yeah, I, me i i, I can good... i can do that after after the show okay definitely. after the show i want to hear your bike suggestions i need a new I don't want like one of these super fast like Tour de France bikes. I need something in the middle. But I yeah, am yeah of course. No, it's always very important to find the right balance. Yeah, it's uh, yes. What you need. I mean, uh, I have a very nice one. I and also all this all this equipment. You know, you can fall in love with. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very tricky business if you get into it. I mean, all these shoes, all the clips, all the helmets. Uh, oh I mean, yeah, have you got all of it? Have you got yeah, of course. I mean, okay. Really? I mean, I'm almost like a professional biker. I just don't really? go on, on tournaments, but yeah. Really? How? 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 Just very quickly, while we see where you uh, think about F6. Here, how? How? How much do you ride a day? Well, I mean, I the only limit is that I never have too much time. So it's like one, one and a half hours, depending. If suddenly I have free schedule, then then okay, two hours for sure. But so that's but, like so you're doing like. 30 kilometers a day or something yes yes something like this yeah it's really good yeah it's uh, i mean you know before i used to be i was playing like everyday football tennis sure. squash whatever but with after my knee injury i had to to readjust yeah and then mm. biking uh, became like the the big big issue i mean the the, the big story so where is uh, taking his time I mean, one thing I can tell you, the most dangerous thing in China is the electrical bikes. I mean, those, those things in, in Ningbo 2011, I felt like, you know, I, I will not survive. Yeah, because just, just out of nowhere, those, those bikes were appearing, you know. I but I've tried, I've tried the electric bikes. I, I, I don't like them. I just, I, I, I feel like I lose control somehow. I just like my. Have you got an electric bike? No, well? no, not no. not at all. It's just an old style, yeah. Multi gear bike. I like it. I'm looking forward to hearing your suggestions. Yeah, great. great. Talking about bikes, Levon Aronian is going to be on his bike after this game. He's going to have to cycle down to the to the lab and and get some new some new stuff because this was. An absolute horror show of an opening. If way he converts, but Levon is tricky. It's not easy. You don't, you don't just win this position against Levon Aron. You've got to win this two or three times. Okay, exactly. what's he waiting for? F6. Exactly. I mean, he will. He will. First of all, yeah, he's now putting pressure on the e5 pawn. He is trying to provoke f6 because it's some kind of a weakness. I mean, I I can't tell you how to use it. But maybe White will be able to reshuffle his pieces like Queen FC and then protect the DC pawn with Rook E3 and then maybe somewhere hoping for some G4, G5 counterplay. I mean, you don't know. It's it's a terrible position. And another is setup, which might be also interesting, that, for example, F6, Queen F3, if I get a chance to play Rook E4 to challenge this Rook on D4, and uh, also if you play Rook D8, I can play Rook AD1 first. And then try to insist on Rook E4 and, and try to trade one pair of Rooks. It would right. ease my defense. Yes. But here, like in these positions, have I got some annoying Queen A3 jabs? Yeah, Queen A3, then King B1. And then try A5, A4, or is this just, or B5? I don't know which one. Yeah, Maybe. but still, I mean, if I will have Rook E4 as a, as a move, yeah, if, if I yeah. can somehow trade one, then also your king will get loose. Yeah, 
I mean, of course, black is clearly better. Yeah, I'm just trying to to claim something by where he's actually spending time. Yeah, because Levon has found, and I'm not liking this e5. You remember we were that why on earth yeah. do you create some weakness? No, no reason to do that. I see. And I Levon understand. immediately jumps at the opportunity. Yeah, I think that those a5 is, I mean, a5, a4 businesses were just so much more unpleasant. E4 played. Okay, but now wow. it gets very concrete. Wow. He, he's just... He's just going for it. But how exactly? So D takes E4, where is the big issue? D takes E4? Uh, Rook D8, D8, I guess. Rook E D8, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just, just an F rook E2. Well, it's tripling. That look, D3 business comes, yeah? Yes. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Yeah, this is, this is, this is the justification of E5. Yeah, you had, you, you, yes. you had no right to allow the Queen FC looking for Blokadovic. Yeah, this is, this, this is very, very strong. So maybe I have to, can I play Rook C1 trying to get King B1? But no, I will be Rook D2, Queen A3, and, and it's finito on the spot. No, then how do I defend this? How do I defend? I mean, I don't see any other move than, than taking on E4, yeah? Um, yeah, ED3 is a... Uh, hang on! Rook AD1. Can I play Rook AD1? No, I can't. You can take with the Rook. Ah, you wanted to go E D three Rook D three. What did you want to do? No, E D C Queen D C. Queen D three. Goodness me! <laughs> I wanted this trick. What is know. this move here? I don't know if it works. I'm going insane. But uh, but unfortunately, yeah. Rook Rook A D one. You can also just play Rook E D eight, and it's a big spoiler. Rook E D eight, and I'm I mean Rook E eight to D eight, and I'm resigning. Yeah. No, I don't know. I mean after E four, now what to do? Ah, oh, wow! Sotiris is telling us that apparently the only move is Queen F4. Wow. In this I mean, position okay. here? Yes, in this position here. Queen F4, only move. I mean, you got to find the move at all as a candidate. What is it? I don't even get it. Well, Queen F4, that ED3, then King C3, King and C3. you have back rank, and I want to trade something. But even there, I can win a pawn, right? At the very worst. Okay, but uh, then, then yeah. I'm happy. And you have wow. I mean, okay, Queen F4 would be just in, in probably C4 finds if it. Levon finds it. He probably finds it. Yeah, out of desperation. Yeah, that okay. D4 look E8 to D8, and and basically just the feeling of Levon will signal him. No, 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 no. This is checkmate. I mean, Levon is incredibly powerful with the initiative. So maybe he finds it, but Super tough. I mean, stepping into this fourth rank, uh, stepping into we takes this the check and so on. By wow. the way, it's anyway bad, but it's the best. Four minutes. Levon Aronian. And the state of shock. Look at how he's sitting there. <laughs> Can't believe it, can he? Yes. I mean, you know what, what I feel that it's not like, you know, he find this idea of going Queen F4 and then you feel at least some hope in his body language. Yeah. I, I just feel like he's just sitting there in, in total state of shock. But, but maybe this is Levon and he's just very tricky. And in fact, he's calculating Queen F4 already for two minutes. Super tense moment. Super, super tricky moment. And everything else loses. Also, sorry, after Queen F4, if I take take and go E3, is that a is that I know it's insane, but I want to have Yeah, well, I mean you can, but then uh, then I think I'm quite happy with White. I mean, I know that uh -huh. I'm I have a bad position, yeah. So I'm not uh, thinking about having a good one, but 
I feel some hope that I'm going to go King CC. I, I have my pawns also that, that I'm pushing, yeah? Right, you're going to go I mean, at least, And there you go. Queen F4, Levon Aronia, ladies and gentlemen. No matter how bad the position, he finds the best defense. Yeah, this is incredible. What a defense by Levon. I mean, these are the moves that drives your opponent crazy also, yeah? That you feel like, okay, I'm not crushing through with e5, e4, and then these guys find these only moves, posing some uh, psychological problems, yeah? Because black doesn't want to trade queens. I mean, in general, black would like to mate white's king. So maybe just moving the queen somewhere, but then you are actually, then I'm going to take with the rook on e4, trade one pair of rooks, and, uh, and I'm hoping... Wow, wow, wow. I mean, okay, this is, this is an unbelievable defense. That's what makes him special. And a lot of these guys, you have to beat them. Not only do you have to beat them, they find, they make your life incredibly tough. That's, that's the worst thing. They, 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 they don't roll over. You go down the ranks, you know, we see capitulation a lot earlier. These guys, they just, they make your life incredibly tough. Queen f4, brilliant move. Yeah, absolutely. And it has the psychological effect. Yeah, I mean, uh, very, maybe he had foreseen the move, yeah, but... Uh, I think right now he's regretting of going for this e5, e4 operation. I mean, he could have just played by hand, you know, not allowing Levon any of these uh, tricky, brilliant uh, defensive ideas. Yeah, just leave him in the misery. And here now, maybe it's very good for Black, but you have to calculate. And uh, you have to make some decision which is against your will. Yeah, that's, that's what I find it now quite difficult to deal with from Black's side. You don't want to trade queens. You don't want to trade pair of rooks that are going to take on e4. And you also don't really want to take ed3 because then after king c3, you have this back rank issue all of a sudden. And uh, also queen trade is inevitable. So I would not be in the shoes of Vey right now. I mean, two moves ago, yes, but now it's not so easy. You got to make a very tough decision. Three minutes, 22 seconds. They're more or less even on time now. It's still going to be very tense. Is Wei Yi going to find a way? Can, can he actually opt for Queen G6? Could Queen G6 be a move now? It's on the board. Queen G6 on wow. the board. Wow. Wow. I mean, it's, it's the I human move, like yeah, it. because I... I don't want to trade queens and I want to, I see that computer doesn't like it so much, but it's so natural. I love it. I love this move because um, you make white think, number one. You know, the level might have been contemplating what to do after queen f4, g4, e3, rook f1. And now after rook a, d1. Yeah, that's the big question. What to do after rook a, d1? Because maybe you yeah played and now the, no it, the, ah I yes it's played yeah, H6. now you just go h six create yes the exactly yeah you have to go h six basically Correct. creating the luft and well you're still pinned though you are pinned yeah maybe I can make this terrible stupid move king c one just wow. Just sidestepping and hoping that now I will start trading. With every move, you feel as though Levon is this Queen F4 really energized his his task. Yeah, I mean he has hope. Yeah, he changed the character of the position. Yeah, whether Black wins on the spot or actually White is getting out. That's the situation. 
And look at this, evolution bar immediately switched and, and gives hope for white to survive. Quite incredible. Yeah, and, and how Levon is digging in. Yeah, look at this, so focused. He knows that he needs to survive this in order to stay, stay in the match today. And very done to one minute, 40 seconds. I mean, this is not easy. He, can, he needs to calculate and he needs to find the way. He can also take look this, yeah, he takes look, takes this. Yeah, it's true, but uh, I'm not sure that this is. Okay, so you take. ED. Yeah, well, taking the two because Luki one runs into Queen B8 checkmate, yeah. So that's uh, that's King a problem. D King D2, a uh, King C3 also. Okay, Rook somewhere. Yeah, just to highlight, yeah, Luki one is a big mistake because of Queen B8 checkmate. Okay, so Rook uh, Rook F8 tidy. Or Rook D8, but Rook, rook D8 runs queen into Queen D7. D4. Ah, queen d4 even. Yeah, because otherwise I would have queen f6 check. Ah, uh, sorry, queen c7 blunders queen f6, yes. Yes, so look, look d8, queen d4 is important. Yeah, look d8 played and I think we're going to see... Queen d4, yeah. Yeah, because, uh, I mean... If you give black a move here, it's still bad news for white. If h6 is allowed to be played, it's really, really bad for black for white. Exactly. Now the big yes. question is that how does this line go? Queen d4, you have queen g5, and after h4, you have some d2. That's oh. that's a completely insane line that I spotted. E2. That's it. Queen yeah, takes yeah. g3 check. Exactly. So basically, queen d4, queen g5, and the intrigue. Oh, Levon! Levon! Back in his chair! He thinks it's over again. He thinks it's over. It was a, it was a frustrated lean back. Yeah, it might have been connected with this D2 discovery. I mean, apparently, according to computer, there is something, some defense for white. Yeah, but uh, I fully agree that, yeah, black is starting to play H6 and Levon down to a minute. I mean, just give H6 and it should be slowly winning for, for black. I mean, it, it's a pawn and okay, white's king is also quite exposed. And queen d4, queen g5 seems to be working. I mean, could it be that? I, no, but uh, it can't be. I mean, after queen g5, I suddenly thought like queen d7 would be a move or not, but I, I can't believe in this move. It's too much. But it's the only move I can think of. We are trying to force this rook e8 issue. Queen f6 check. Queen f6 check. King has to go to b4. And okay, you just okay. Well, worst case, you go g6. Yeah. yeah. Okay, queen d4 played. Yeah, queen g5, h4, oh, and h4. D4. Now you're d2. Yeah, will be will be played, of course. D2. This is the logical. Line, but yeah, this d2 was. But wait, d2. No, rookie a check. Wait, wow, rookie a check. You have rookie a check. Wow, yeah, I you... distract you, and then you are winning. Wow, thank you very much. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so easy to lose it. Yeah, so there you go, queen a5 check. No, but this is the way queen d2 check. No, king a3. Wait, yeah, queen um... a2, king a3, b5. Can you? Oh my God, yeah, but B5, I mean, okay, Why the not? D3 pawn is hanging, but yeah, B5 is a move. B5, 
B5. Okay, you give a check, you give two checks, and then you go B5. Queen C1! Queen C1! When, where, how? Here! Yeah. But, I mean, is that good? Okay, rook c1, rook d4. Yeah, but, I mean, I feel like, okay, the white is I'll very coordinated. Yeah, but I'll have three versus one on the king side. Yeah, but this b pawn looks very... No, I, I like b5 much more. b5 has to be played. Okay. What? Careful. He's repeating too many times. Don't do it, Wei Yi. Well, now no, he can't, can't play queen, queen a5, a5 anymore. He can't play queen a5. What has he done? Oh my god. He has god. to go queen c1 now. But then king a4, no? I, I don't think that he's going to go queen c1. I, I just don't feel that he's going to do this. But, okay, then you can move the rook to f8, maybe. But then rook e3... Uh, now, even that's unclear. What if I just go rook f8? Wow, he moves rook c8. Yeah, this is also good. Well, but... I don't know. I mean, I have this queen d7 business, yeah? Queen d7? I mean, I have this queen d7 business. And then I can just go rook uh, f8. I oh, know, rook e8, you want check. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm surviving. Rook e5, Satira says. Rook e5 with the idea of rook d5. Wow. Wow, seconds. but this is, this is almost impossible to find. Yeah, this is just way too much. This is way too much. Even for the great Levon Aronian. Rook e3. Yeah, rook e3 yeah. played. Yeah, 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 yeah. But look easily, I'm, I'm not, not a fan of look easily. Yeah, queen a5, yes. check, king b2. Check, okay. Okay, we, we, the 20 seconds. Okay, we gain 20 seconds. Yeah, because actually, but how does, I mean... Okay, so queen c1, check. Somewhere some b5 should be winning, but I mean, how do you figure it out with 20 seconds? Can you play b5 now, actually? Why not? Okay, queen c1 one check. Maybe. Now b5 check. Does it do anything actually? Just king takes. Ooh. Oh my god. I mean, down to what 10 seconds. Where you if he, 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 he might lose. Yeah. Queen c2? Queen c2. What is this? I will take c4. No. Wait, what? King a3. What is going on? I don't understand anything. Why couldn't he take on d3? b5 check or something. Insane. Yeah, I mean, okay, with few seconds on the clock, no, how do you navigate, impossible. yeah? Incredible. Down to seven seconds. No, 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 no. Yeah, h6. He opens the, the loop. But I mean, okay, now queen now the form. is safe. Unbelievable. Okay. Well, I, I even don't know how to evaluate it. It's still such a bizarre position with the white king. Yeah, because A4. actually, queen takes d3, rook c5. Oh, no, sorry, I blundered made him one. I beg Yes, pardon. exactly. I'm I mean, blundering. That idea works very well against rook d3. But yeah, against queen takes d3, it's not. Okay, so queen d3, maybe you just go g6 or something. Well, a6 trying some b5 check. Yeah, or a6. I mean, it's still, you still take black. But Levon showing incredible skills here. Yeah, Levon down to 10 seconds himself. Wow, I mean, okay, what do you do now? Queen takes this thing, you should take. No, he queen goes to queen b7. d7. Wow. The Rook takes c4 queen check. D7. Rook takes c4 check, queen takes e 3 Ah. Then yes. queen c8 check. Ah, he takes first. Oh, no, he first, took but, first. Does but it it's perpetual check anyway. Queen, queen uh, c8 check, queen why? f5. Oh my god, it is. Oh wow, level goodness. survives. Can you believe this? I mean, okay, we are into an incredible match. Now, 
incredible. Yeah, very in a state of shock. I mean, he should make sure not to lose on time. Quick. Queen c5. King b3. Yeah, okay, now he needs to take the rook and okay, that's it. It's just a draw. It's perpetual. Wow, wow, Check. wow. I mean... Okay, now actually after Queen c3, I think computer will stop the game. King a4, threefold. No, not yet? Not yet. Then after Queen c4, King a3. I feel like we have seen it a million times. And look at this. Levon can't believe his luck that he has killed. Unbelievable. Him. Yeah, that's it. That is two opportunities for Wei Yi. First in game two and now in game three. Unable to win this position against Levon Aronian. And how do you bounce back from that psychologically, Peter? You've got a winning position with black, a winning position with white. You can't convert. It's extremely frustrating. How is he going to deal with such a setback? Yeah, it will be very tough. I mean, okay, I would advise him to think about the first game when Levon was about to hit on E6, to, to carry those emotions with himself for, for game four to get some happiness. That, okay, come on, if I would have lost that first game in 20 moves, then... I would have never been in the situation that I am right now. Yeah, somehow like this to, to keep the psychological balance. Absolutely incredible drama here. One game left, game four. Aronian will have the black pieces, but he'll be feeling very good to not be currently losing this match. Shocked, really, that way he didn't find a way there. Uh, it was tough. Brilliant. Let's go to that moment. Queen f4. Uh, or the opening even. We can show the, we can show the opening uh, mistake by Aronian, Peter. Yeah, he actually fell into the trap. Yeah, he did not know the deep point behind rook c7. Yeah, he just felt like it's just a move, like maybe where he wants to move the queen to b8 or to a8, yeah, which is also very, very standard. But after knight c in fact, there is this big point that after d4 takes takes. Knight b5, rook d7. Now the d4 pawn is protected. The rook, uh, knight and queen. So white has to play knight e5. Otherwise his knight on b5 will be misplaced. Uh, so it's basically very, very direct and forced. Takes, takes, queen takes e5. And from the distance, white looks like, okay, come on. d5, d4 was premature. I'm attacking this pawn with the knight, bishop and queen. And if I get to this pawn, then everything, the bishop will open up. Everything is fun, wonderful. However, after rook d7, you only can take this pawn with the knight. Bishop takes, runs into a6, losing the piece. Yeah, then, then both pieces will fall. So white has to take with the knight. And then suddenly after knight g4, we discussed the tactics with knight e6, did not work out. And then Levon had to stick to some miserable position after takes, takes bishop c5. Yeah, the pin is absolutely miserable. And after king e3, rook e8 was also good. Black had a big advantage and Levon found a great resource in the move Queen F4 a few moves later uh, around this point here where you piling on the pressure and after E4 the only move to stay on the board Queen F4 brilliant move trying to emphasize the back rank problems that Black has um, it's still very very complicated a number of ways for Black to go but Levon stayed on the board and he was totally dead. We go right the way uh, to the end, uh, Peter. Black a pawn up. You know, white's king position. Queen g5 was excellent. Queen a5 was excellent. All of this was excellent. Queen d2. King here. And now, uh, yeah, going back, sorry. And now the move b5, right? That was the, that was the key move. If we put queen a5 check on the board. Not here. because Yes, of, yes. Hey, pardon sorry. me, yeah. Yeah, um, so, so queen a5, uh, yeah, king, and now b5. This was intuitively what I was thinking as well. You cover the rook um, and you open the position. But after c takes b5, it's not completely clear 
why it's winning. Maybe now you just give Luft to the king or something. Yes, Maybe I mean, something like h6, six. and okay, yeah. you just carry on these emotions. I mean, okay, this is just lovely for black. Yeah, and, and there was then later another missed opportunity, but it was completely insane, and it was very, very computerish. So the move b5, I think it was more more human, but uh, where he did not spot it. He went rook c8, and here, apparently, rook e5 with the idea, rook d5 was the incredible mm. defense, getting behind, setting rook d8, targeting the pawn, and more importantly, the rook also keeps an eye on the b5 square, which, which could have been used. Sotiris mentioned as this incredible computer line, but I mean, how do you see all this with, with seconds on the clock after rook e3? Apparently, the move b5 uh, was, was very, very strong. b5 with the idea that if y takes cb5, queen a5 check, now king b2 is not possible due to rook c2 and then checkmate. And after queen a4, black has queen d8 back and covers the back rank and supports the deep pawn. Forget I mean, it. That, that was quite an in incredible way of, of winning the game. But he didn't, and Aronian survived. And that means one more game to go today. The game kicks off in about 10 minutes. We're going to go for a short break to get ready for the final game. In the meantime, get yourselves that premium membership. 40% off. Use the code Road to Miami. You'd be mad not to. And we're going to be back in just a few minutes for the final game. Will the wheels finally come off the way ye? Two golden opportunities to take day one. Now, he does have the white pieces, but how is his psychological state going to be? We'll soon find out. Stay tuned. Field is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6 bishop g5 Nidorov. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. It's, no, it's just to move. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah! Here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. What do you think about this opening? Honestly, what do you think you about don't have to play knight c3. We can actually put a piece on d2, which is better, because then we avoid the potential doubling of our c pawns. What you have to understand about practical endgames as a whole is that just like in the middle game or the opening, um, you cannot rely uh, solely on these general considerations. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. 
David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Our starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Seriously? Checkmate! Aim Chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew. Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world, fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. Hello everybody and welcome back to the final game of today's action. It is the FTX Road to Miami final, day one. There are two days, Aronian against Wei Yi. We've had three incredibly tense fighting battles. Don't be fooled by the three draws. They have been magnificent games, but it's Wei Yi. Who's going to feel hard done by? Two glorious positions, winning positions he was unable to convert. And with one game to go with the white pieces, how is he going to deal with the disappointment, with the psychological aspect of this game? So often underappreciated. 
Well, we're soon going to find out. Peter, what do we think? I, I have a feeling where he's going to keep it calm. I don't think he's going to do anything crazy and just we'll try and get this day done with and, and, and recover for tomorrow. Yeah, but it's not his style. Maybe he should okay. do it. Yeah, he, maybe he should do it because one should not underestimate yeah, all these emotional roller coasters, missed chances and so on. And he goes D4 and Lavon will play, play the Nimtso, uh, but I guess it's going to be Catalan. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine Vey going for, for anything else than that. No, he doesn't oh, wow. go for Catalan. Okay, Ragoz in. All right. Very interesting because the specialty of Vey in against the Ragoz in is Queen A4 check, which leads to very interesting, messy double H positions. Will he go for it or will he just uh, take a calmer approach? That's the big question. I mean, uh, there are so many other ways, yeah, just to play, for example, bishop g5. However, after bishop g5, Levon always goes for d takes c4. And we, we're going to see a Vienna? Yes. We're going to see a Vienna. I mean, the transformation from Lagos into Vienna variation. Aha, uh -huh, the old Vienna. Yes. Well, uh, I think this was a clever move order by... Oh, and we get the spicy e4, b5 line. This is very nice. I remember the very famous game. Uh, was it Gelfand Aronian or Aronian Gelfand, where there was A4 C5 played at Vikanze? Exactly. And, and this is what Levon is hoping because, in general, oh. you really hope that when you play this variation, that you catch your opponent uh, by surprise. Yeah? Exactly. Yes, because only, only in this moment you play this. And now the big question is, yeah, that how well is very prepared? Because otherwise in the fourth game, after all these disappointments, this could be a very tricky position to, to be with from the white, white side. Don't, don't be fooled by the computer version. Yeah, according to computer, this is not entirely sound and white is better, but you just make one human move and you might end up being worse. Yeah, 94, H6, I remember all of this. Yeah, yeah and, and that's the point that White was forced to give up his dark thread bishop. Yeah, that's that's the trick of the whole position. Yeah, takes takes bishop c4, white wins the pawn, but the dark squares black has very, very active pieces. I mean, uh, it's clear compensation for, yeah, and black, yeah, exactly. Black puts the bishop on b7. Sometimes this bishop on b4 uh, comes back to c5. Uh, and can settle on b6, knight to d7, can come to b6. There are lots of squares for the black pieces. So it's absolutely not at all clear uh, the best way for white, if I remember correctly. I'm curious about it, though. So Yeah, basically my take is in this position as well, that if it's, uh, both players are unprepared, I would pick black. If uh, white is prepared with computers and everything, then, then maybe white can get a slight advantage. But uh, now it's really the big question how much way he knows about this. Or even if he knows about it, does he recall? Because definitely he did not expect this to happen. Instead of a nice, lovely little Catalan, yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> felt like game four, everybody's exhausted. It's almost uh, 3 30. In the morning in the Chinese time, I mean, take it slow, but no, where is where he true to himself? He tries to be as ambitious as possible. Castle, castles on the board. Yeah, so castles, castles. And now, um, can white play the move queen a4? Queen a4. I mean, I really feel like you are some kind of an expert here. I vaguely remember looking at this and never playing it with black because I thought, oh, I'll play this with black one time. But I can't remember if this was good or bad. And I also remember rook a4 being a move. I remember some move because I remember this position because this is almost, you get here by force. Rook a4 maybe mm -hmm. is also interesting. What do you do against rook a4? Yeah, trying to clarify the situation, yeah? Yeah. 
Yeah, and the whole point is that against any bishop c5, you want to go knight bc, knight, 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 knight a5. Yeah. And then hit one of those bishops, yeah, because yes. these, these, these bishops are the, the soul of black's position. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, yeah, there's something to a4, yeah, that's the key. Yeah, I think you'll play as well, because white doesn't have that many moves here. Because rook d8 is coming, no? I mean, rook d8 is just a, a very serious threat. So you kind of... I... I but I, I remember there was something wrong with queen a4. Was it a5? Can you play this? a5? Wow, queen a4, a5, yeah? I vaguely remember something. b a6, knight a6. And if bishop a6, can you play queen d4? Is this, is this legal? It's is this real legal. life? Yeah. Rook d1, queen b6, you might even be in trouble there as white. Well. I mean, yeah, it feels like, you know, you are ready to make a chessable course on it. Well, I'm, uh, you know, if they want me to, maybe. <laughs> I think there's probably already one on the Vienna, to be honest. But you can get my other chessable courses, guys. I mean, feel free. Go to chessable, type in my name. Go and get the courses. Simple as that. Well worth it. They say. Well, I think that it's also a very nice example. Yeah, that I mean, if you talk about some stuff, then then you really know what you are talking about. Yeah. So it's well. Uh, not always. Yeah. Not always. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, Especially when it comes to chess. But let's see. Okay. Wei Yi, I think he's out of book here. So all of these little fine, you know, if I was white here and I hadn't seen this position before, I think the move I would go for is queen a4. And then Levon might hit him with the a5. Rook a4 does make a lot of sense, though. But... But yeah, basically, in order to appreciate Luke A4, you have to understand that Queen A4 does not work nicely, yeah? Yeah, and, and A5 is, is not a move that just you see and then suddenly you think, oh, this is a, this is a, a splendid move. Yeah, and where you opted for Knight F3, and this is what I was talking Ooh, knight about. Knight F3. If, if White just makes a natural move, I mean, trying to get some stability in the back will be perfectly fine. I mean, the Knight is coming to D7, as you said, Black has all this lovely squares for the knight. I mean, black is immediately very comfortable. Totally agree. So like rook d8 here. Yeah, rook d8 played. Now you have to put this queen somewhere. No, 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 no. This is not the way. Queen b3. Okay, bishop c5 inst instantly. Yes. Yeah, now suddenly is white. Uh, your problem is you can't easily move the knight away from a a4 because e4 is hanging a lot, and the, the bishop just parks itself so nicely on b6. And you have to think that okay, knight a4, but okay, this doesn't shouldn't really be an issue. Yeah, I guess that okay, where he's already trying to get rid of this game. I mean, I think he has already enough had enough. Yeah, um, it's it's very unpleasant yeah, to be yeah. bored out. After, after but, all this, what happened in the previous games, and you are in unknown territory, you feel like Black has more than enough compensation. Levon is blitzing things out. You don't know the position. You don't know exactly the subtleties of the position. Very, very annoying. This is horrible. And I feel Bishop like also F8. Levon with the move Bishop F5, maybe even toying with, uh, I mean, he wants to play for the maximum, not even going Knight D7, which might have been easy move to get full equality. He's trying to keep some spice in the position. Okay, D1. G5. That's it. Also, this is not an aggressive move. This is a positional move. Black is trying to 
get control over some dark squares. And I'm just going to, you talk, Peter, and I'm going to adjust my lighting here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the point is that G5 is, first of all, yeah, one can argue that Black is even trying to go G4 and then Knight E5. It's true, but uh, just sitting on, on the E5 square with Knight E5, it's, it's a lovely move and also very typical one in this structure when, when you have the dark square bishop. Of course, if white would have the dark square bishop, then we would not ever be talking about a move like G5 being possible. But I'm a I'm little bit worried from, I mean, emotionally, feeling-wise, from the white side, I would just say like, okay, hang on, how can I somehow shut this down. I just want safety because I can't believe that white can be any better. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's how I feel about this position. E5. E5. Oh, this is, a, this is a panic move. This is a panic move, isn't it? Well, some kind of... Now, the question is that, okay, however, how do you use it? Because maybe with queen f4, then you also destroy your own pawn structure, but you are hitting on fc and you are hitting, yeah, queen f4 played. It's so natural. Because after e5, of course, white was dreaming of some bishop dc, bishop e4 re relocation mm -hmm. of the bishop just in time, but after queen f4, this is never possible. I'm really worried for where you here. Very unpleasant. Very nasty stuff. Yeah, takes, takes. I mean, I feel like rook d4 is a move, but it runs into this knight takes d5 and then rook takes f4 and then try to try to survive this very, very, um, very ugly, very unpleasant. Is it survivable at all? But I, I feel like if I don't go for rook d4, then I... I mean, my feeling doesn't say any, oh, just bishop e2 back is that, but it's so passive. I just don't, don't believe in moves like bishop e2. But maybe you have to do it. Maybe you have to, I mean, the position is already such that you have to acknowledge that black is better and you have to dig in and, and try not to give him any chances. I mean, big chances. Levon, Levon, the, the player with incredible big opening knowledge, yeah, having all these lines, all these tricky lines that he can just uh, use in the critical moment. He felt that Vey is probably vulnerable after what happened in the previous game and he goes for it. Bishop e on the board. Yeah, it, it made sense. I mean, simply not, not allowing uh, the, the destroyment of the structure, but... I mean, I really feel that black is better and black has a very easy game. Agreed. But okay, how exactly? Yeah? Look, A, B, 8, yeah, I was expecting more like look, A, C, 8, but probably more or less the same. So Levon, ah, Levon wants to take on F3 and he wants to take on E5 and also I, the B5 pawn. That's why he put his look on B8. This is a very annoying move. Rook AB8. White's pawns are very, very poor. What do you do here, actually? Yeah, big, big, big question. I mean, okay, I have a move like Rook D4 steel. Yeah, I have Rook D4 not. Ah, uh, Rook D4. I mean, I really would love to get rid of this. Played. I uh, played, yes. Yeah, Bishop takes F6. I mean, bishop it takes, I guess. Well, but bishop takes and knight takes e5. Yeah, bishop takes, knight takes e5. I take on f4, you take on b5, and I'm worse. Yes. Bishop uh, c6? No, sorry, the knight's on e5, sorry. With this bishop, I mean, with this pawn on b2. So there is some argument for destroying the pawn structure with gf, but to, to keep on... To keep mm. hanging on to the b5 pawn. Mm. But it really ruins the structure and you give all the initiative for black. But maybe you have to. Maybe it's better to take GF. But very, very tough. And, and okay, yeah. Poor Vey. This is now really, really very, very unpleasant. 
the idea you have played. I mean, come on, uh, very hold it because I just feel like yeah. okay, you don't deserve to lose this. Uh, but look at the one, look at this. Computer says, who cares about deserving? It's what is happening with the position. Takes, takes, look, B5. It's oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I mean, okay, luckily I have look at four, so maybe I'm holding, but I wanted to keep my B5 pawn. That was the whole point. Oh my god, yeah, takes, takes, look B5. Yeah, oh, look at D4 on the board, and look B5 will be blitzed out, yes. Look, takes F4. One weakness, two, three, four. And, uh, and the F4 square also a terrible weakness, so black might be able to set up some uh, grip on the dark squares, then it will be very, very unpleasant for, uh, for white. Luckily, the rook is hanging on b5, that's a big tempo, and maybe we'll be able to control the dark square somehow with a timely rook e4, f4, I don't, I don't know, it's, it's very, very worrying. And eight minutes, Time advantage for Levon as well. Yeah, rook d5, eyeing, entering with rook d2. Okay, I'm expecting some king f1 anyway, that king f1 should come and, and protect the bishop, somehow removing the rook. And also Levon probably gets ready for bishop d6, so he took away any kind of disturbing rook d4 moves out of the way. Unpleasant task here. Wouldn't it be just cruel if Wei Yi were to lose this match today, it would be horrible. Absolutely horrible. But yeah, because, was... because one can argue that, yeah, there is a new match tomorrow. However, there is a very, very big difference between going into that final match uh, with a 2-2 draw. And you know that if the match tomorrow ends in a 2-2 tie, then you still have the Blitz playoff, yeah? everything to play for, so there is no this direct pressure that you have to, you know, try to do crazy things in order to, to win at all costs. And uh, that's, that's a very big advantage, I feel, if, if Levon wins this. It will be heartbreaking for Wei Yi, but what, a, what an awful position to have to defend. I mean, truly gross to defend this. Bad knight, bad bishop, bad structure, bad rook, bad king, bad to the bone. Yeah, rook e4. Yeah, rook e4 Makes has sense. to be played. Yeah, Levon, of course, immediately eyes the f4 square. Yeah, he wants bishop d6. Knight f4, that would also the h2 pawn then is becoming extremely weak. This knight on a4, if this knight could jump to d3, then it would give some stability. Then, then white would be feeling... That yeah, he's slightly worse, but but it's doable with with the knight on a4 and with the knight just retreating to c3 without being able to fight for the dark squares. Feels very unpleasant, and it's also one of those constructions that you cannot really liquidate into some some lowish position. Yeah, that you give a pawn and okay, we know that in end games limited material. No, here this kind of strategy does not work at all. Too much dynamics in play. Look at Black's pieces. Oof. And the structure. Perfect harmony. When did your appreciation for structure and stability and coordination, when did you start to get a real appreciation for these things? Well, I think very early on. I think at the age of nine or age of 10, it was already the soul of my chess. Yeah, it was all about structure, all about these finesses because I was, I was basically a positional player. I was also a big fan of Tigran Petrosian's games and his book, yeah, this uh, wonderful book with his chess uh, lectures. I mean, all those squares meant so much to me. And the position that exchange sacrifices, the, the, those, those crazy ones, yeah, not the simple thematic ones, but the, there were some incredible uh, sacrifices uh, against Reshevsky with rook e6, I think, rook e7 to e6, giving the, the rook on e6 to get fe6 structure, and then on the light squares to sit 
against Tarsam, look F6, look F4, you know, those were the moves that I I was uh, I was raised, yeah? I was just fully in love with that. Fantastic stuff. That's why I told you that when I heard about Gukesh that he said that this small little finesse from Kramnik giving like the, the move to the opponent and slowly improving the position against Georg Meyer from Dortmund 2011, was it? Uh, then, then I knew that, okay, that's it. I mean, this, this kid is, I mean, if he feels all these subtleties and this is what he felt like, this was the biggest lesson and the, and the most brilliant lesson, then I understood that's it. I mean, this guy will be <laughs> kind of unstoppable. By the way, also Magnus Carlsen was very much this, yeah, that who, who, who felt all these finesses right from the very, very start. And poor very down to three minutes. It's a miserable yeah, I mean, position, just... terrible time situation, and HC, an awful, terrible move to, to play. Yeah? I mean, you just hit this move. That's why he has spent three, three and a half minutes to, to do it, because he just couldn't. It's, it's so terrible, so miserable. Black is coming. Gross. H3. Ugh. Not your favorite move in the world. Goodness me. And and look at, we talked about uh, very having poker face. I, I don't feel the poker face at all. No. Look at the pain, yeah, and the agony, everything. I mean, he just looks at how on earth did I end up in such a such a terrible position. Okay, Bishop g -san, this gives some hope. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, Levon is... Like uh, this move? Well, I mean, simply Bishop d6, Knight f4 looks so much more natural. I mean, I understand position is great for black, but it gives me some hope. I don't know. Okay. Probably Levon wants Luke d2, Bishop d4. I mean, he wants the maximum, yeah? Just some total domination. Trying to play against the Knight on a4 as well. But why is this move? I mean, he played this move, and, and uh, you got excited. But I, I feel, I feel this this is just doesn't change too much. King f one, okay. Yeah, King f one. I mean, okay, it's it's just that uh, now you don't get to the f four square, which hurted me so much. Yeah, he he goes for this direct. Okay, maybe he wants no, but Bishop e five. I will have f four, so it's it's not the end of the world. King g two. King g two. Bishop e5 now? Get then to your F4. F4. Then f4. Thank you very much. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still able to blunder pieces. That's nice to nice to see. Wait, that doesn't Rook H4, Rook H4, I have. Rook H4, I have. We have to put it on board. Yeah. Bishop e5. And it's on the board. F4, Rook H4. Oh my goodness. Wow. Levon. And the point is Rook takes e5 runs in the knight takes e5, f5. Rook takes F A4. The poor horse. Gone. Unbelievable. Okay. So Levon actually wanted to provoke Wait, this. But wanted Bishop E5 provoke. is just finito. And then I'm winning H3. No? Wow. What a, well, what a gross terrible, defensive. Yeah. I mean, basically, is... basically, White has to play Bishop F1. I think White has to play them Bishop F1. But first, he needs to digest that he cannot break out with f4 because he wants to. I mean, bishop f1 is, is a total catastrophe. I mean, okay, who, who plays like that? But what, what to do? Oh, yeah, f4 played, yeah. F4 played. Good or bad, yeah. Look, h4. Well, yeah. Bishop f1 is going to play. Bishop Indirectly. f4. Yeah, of course, because he wants and to. And then knight f4, king f3, yeah. F3 or something like that, and just try and muddy the waters. Yeah. No, he plays king, king g3. g3, walking into everything. What? Bishop takes pawn? I don't get it. Yeah, then he wants to come back. I mean, he wants to somehow trade rooks. 
Ah, that's yeah. That's what he wants to achieve. Somehow to force uh, the situation. But you know, he... there are some endings, right? Where let's say you go bishop f4, king g2, and then I don't know, bishop. Let's say back to e5, and you tra trade the rooks, and you put the bishop on d4, and you domination nation that night, and then the knight can never come back really, because then in so many lines you take on c3, and you have got the past a pawn. Yes. And it's a disgraceful position for white. Yeah, I mean, basically, I, I don't see where you're escaping this. Me neither. Yeah, bishop f4 on the board. And this is chess. It's, it's just so brutal. Yeah, if you don't use your chances, then then usually the opponent does. The punishment is coming. In a way, very similar to football, yeah? I mean, if, if, you, if you don't score, your opponent scores usually. Incredible. I feel so bad for where you, what a miserable spot. Okay. Oh, and he played it as well, Bishop e5. He played it. Of course he did. He's Levon Aronian. Takes, takes, and Bishop d4. There we go. Yeah. Absolutely gross. The knight on a4 is toast. Yeah, and then the position basically wins by itself, yeah? Yeah. You just you just bring the king and start pushing the pawns. <laughs> Levon Aronian, thirteen minutes on his clock, way down to one minute thirty. You know what? It was kind of written. Way he finally cracked, shaking his head. Finally, he gives a bit of emotion and Wei Yi is going to lose match one and he's going to have to come back tomorrow fast and hard. He's disgusted with himself. Two winning positions blown and then with the white pieces outfoxed in an opening he wasn't too familiar with. That's what happens. When the momentum shifts in this game, it is brutal. It can all go to pot real, real fast. Wei Yi, even one of the greatest in the world, one of the biggest talents ever seen. Remember, this was a young man who was 2,700 when he was about, what was he? 15? 15. 15 yeah. He was 2,700 at 15, one of the youngest ever super grandmasters of all time his talent was unquestionable even way ye can suffer the fate of not being prepared well enough in a certain line in a tricky line congratulations to levon aronian for choosing such a brilliant opening by the way the move order this c5 idea everything brilliant stuff by levon aronian yeah, I absolutely agreed. Nothing to add. I mean, I I would like to add that, yeah, where he's fighting, I mean, he at least uh, brought his knight out. Oops. I mean, he brought his knight out. Uh, he was setting up a trap against knight h3 to be able to play knight e6, which Levon uh, kindly um, stopped with king f8. So the pawn on h3 is, is threatened. Also, the big question is bishop takes e5, b takes e5, when the king is coming closer than with this very very powerful pawn and with the h pawn weakness also very hard to see how white could ever survive so king f8 down to 25 seconds just nothing to do though you know there's just no move h3 dropping misery utter 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 misery, 97 checks. Okay, he's given up. You can see uh, just 
his body language, King E7. King E7. Yeah, knight b8, king d6, and b5, knight c6. I mean, but I mean, it does simply nothing. The bishop protects on e7. Bishop eyes do hc pawns after knight hc. This this will also be falling. I mean, oh, you have to waste one more tempo too. Yeah, knight be at king king d6. H4. At least the pawn stays alive. One more move, but I mean, yeah, knight h3 provoking f3 because after f3, then all the dark squares are completely weakened. Goodness me. I actually wouldn't mind seeing a resignation here. It's 4.30 in the morning. Levon is not messing this one up, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's basically impossible to mess it up, yeah? Because it's not one of those that you have to calculate and, okay, you have to find some computer move. I mean, basically, yeah, just every move wins. Bishop b5, okay, um, but, but this knight is also so unfortunate. The, the whole board, thanks to this incredible structure and the dark squares, there is also no good square on the whole board for this knight. Just, I mean, only safe spot is d3, I mean, covering some f4 square, but it's just too far away. Knight d5. The idea is bishop e8, he wants to go like f5 or something, yeah. I guess. Or you just take on b4 and dominate the other knight. Actually, yeah, you just yeah. win a knight, no? Bishop f7, king king c7. Yes. Knight. No, yeah, okay, where he's down to 16 seconds. I mean, his last move was, yeah, 11 grabs on b4. It's over. And that's it, resigns. Wow. Absolute heartbreak for Wei Yi. That is the cruelty of this game. Uh, you, you play brilliant, get that winning position game two, can't push it through. Get that half chance in winning position game three, not precise. You know that you've blundered both games away. You know that you've had a chance to finish the match. You take those plus six positions, it's over. There's not even a game four. Then all of a sudden you're white. The opening doesn't work. You're worse. And you can just feel it slipping away from you. It's truly brutal. But you got to say congratulations to Levon Aronian. He found so many fantastic resources. That Queen F4 move. The King March in game two behind the pawns. You cannot say that he hasn't shown extremely... Uh, impressive resilience and uh, resource his resourcefulness is just it's just so impressive so to a certain extent Levon has also deserved winning today but it is only day one there is another day tomorrow where he does have a chance at redemption is he going to be in the right frame of mind is he going to go on tilt and Aronian is going to walk his way Peter, what do you think? What does Wayne need to change tomorrow, if anything, if he's going to get back into this match? Yeah, well, I don't think that he needs to change anything. I mean, he needs to calm down after this uh, terrible turn of events, what happened to him. I feel that in this regard, starting tomorrow with the white pieces is actually good because he already has clarity. He knows that he actually has to use his white color because... Levon will definitely not go into some messy kind of positions when he will have the white pieces. So there will be the question if where he can uh, pose problems to Levon's openings. Now, seeing today's games, I don't really feel that Levon will continue the Queen's Gambit accepted uh, debate. No, it's time to move to Ragozin. And uh, I mean, okay. Against such a very solid repertoire like the Nimzo Ragozin Catalan complex, 
Will where he feel like this is the territory where he wants to challenge Levon. Yeah, and this is exactly why I feel that it was so crucial for Levon to, to get the, the win today because there is just no pressure for him tomorrow. Every of these choices suits him perfectly. The, the tension will be on Vei to, to go crazy. Should I now start to switch to E4, you know, then you have to change your whole uh, repertoire for this match. I mean, he did not plan to, to fight against Levon in E4 territory. So, so much, so much chess problems uh, are also there just because of the result. Yeah, otherwise with the 2-2, then okay, tomorrow no pressure. You can try, test something with Black, you are solid. You are waiting for your chances, but after this for you, you need to try to grab the initiative. You don't have other choice. Yeah, well, he, not really much to do. He's got to win tomorrow. That's it. He's got to win his match, force it to the tie breaks. Uh, so we could get tie breaks tomorrow. Uh, we'll, of course, keep you updated on that. But for the moment, a very disappointing day for Wei Yi. Are we going to see him bounce back tomorrow? Are we going to see the kind of mental toughness that is required to become the best of the best. Well, you'll be back, I'm sure, to find out. We'll be back to find out. Before we go, of course, don't forget the running promotions. 40% off a premium membership of Chess24. Use the code Road to Miami. Get yourselves an FTX account. We've got plenty of things going on. The one of the leading cryptocurrency exchanges uh, we're going to be giving you guys a chance to win some amazing prizes, but you need to get an account free of charge, super easy to set up. Don't forget the improvers pack on chess24.com forward slash free. You want to get better at chess for free? How about the improvers pack? Anna Rudolph, Simon Williams, Daniel Naroditsky, giving you some fantastic instruction and get yourselves to the wall. Solve the puzzles, comment on the posts, engage. Um, you can win some cool prizes, a Twitter-style theme page now on Chess24. Highly suggest you go there. It's been an exhilarating day. Tons of ups and downs and dramatic moments. That's why we love this game. The heartbreak, though, we do feel for Wei Yi, but it's only part of the story. Chess, it's a game of two halves. Well, sometimes. In this particular case, it is. First half goes to Levon Aronian. But we've seen comebacks before. Are we going to see it by the Chinese genius? We're going to find out tomorrow. Thank you so much for everybody for joining us wherever you are in the world. It's been an absolute pleasure. And we will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place for the final day. The FTX Road to Miami. Who will be with the winner? Tomorrow we'll find out. Thanks very much for joining. Quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things.